Sure. First, let me just say good evening to everyone. Thank you for coming to December's Quality of Life Committee meeting. I'm Pat Moore, the chair. Mariama James is co-chair. She is also on. And Lucian Reynolds is CB1's district manager. And he will be, I guess, helping to facilitate the meeting tonight, right? He's our, he's also our technical whiz. <laughs> so take it away. Okay, uh, this is Walkman One from New York City DDC. I'm going to first talk about uh, the Worst Street project. Uh, we're starting to get near the end of this thing. Hopefully, we'll be done sometime uh, in May of 2022. We're at the location right now of Worth and Church, as we've been for a while. Uh, we're putting in some catch basins and also we got to do some street lighting. We got to move some ducks, but and then we got to do sidewalks, curbs in that corner and that area. And then we'll put in the concrete base for the road and then repave the road between uh, church and uh, Broadway. So that's kind of like the main location where we have an open road where the road is being dug up and, and work is being done. Uh, we're also going to be installing new uh, street lights and traffic signals on Worth Street. I think there's approximately 16 of them. And that all that is, uh, we're also starting that at this point. We also have at that intersection on Church and Worth, we are also still waiting for Con Ed to take out a feeder. That uh, since they've had some emergencies and uh, other projects that were in the line in front of us somehow, uh, they're planning to, we're on the list. So we should be getting the feeders taken out soon, hopefully. And once that is done, it, it makes it easier for us to do our work around them because there's like uh, live feeders. They don't want us working around their uh, feeders. So uh, hopefully that one location is done uh, within the next uh, couple of months and the lights are ongoing as we speak. They're starting to do them now. Like I said, there's 16 of them. Basically, they're uh, uh, replacing existing light poles and traffic signal poles that are already there so we don't have to rip up the roads or anything like that to do that it's just right behind the curb take out the old one do a little cosmetic uh concrete work in that area some wiring and then throw the new pole and all the attachments on there and then go to the next one so it's uh the hard part is coordinating with all the people that have cameras and everything else and all kinds of devices on t on these poles so that we can get them taken off put the new pole on and then have them put them back on that seems to be uh you know a little crazy but uh, we're working through it and uh you know that that's ongoing work so hopefully we're talking uh may of 2022 where we think that we should be done Unless we find something else, but at this point, that's that's what we're talking about. Walkman, um, I gotta tell you that the residents that live on Worth Street have been to us several times. They are irate. They yes. are just completely, you know, done with this project. I understand and, uh, Liz, that. Is Liz on? Is Liz around? Anyway, so. Um, Lucian, help me out with this, but and, and Mariama, Mariama and I um, went out and actually, you know, went to uh, do a site visit a few months ago and talked to the residents. One of the big issues that they have is a rat problem. I don't know what's going on with the rat abatement, but they have a huge rodent issue. Um, oh. And I know that Liz has been has heard about it and has been working with them. I'm not sure why it hasn't helped or according to them, it hasn't helped. The lights are also a big issue because they really feel that it's a safety problem. I'm glad to hear that you started to work on them, but you know, I, it, it seems like it's taken longer than it should have. Yeah, uh, well, that's that was kind of like they were doing that near the end because that's, you know, after all the road work and all that stuff is done, that, that's kind of like the finished stuff at the end. You know, it's it's not too intrusive. Hopefully that goes, you know, but it, I think that, we don't have any trouble with that. How much, how much longer has this project run than originally forecast? forecast? Well, 
Okay, it depends on who you talk to. Uh, the contractor originally bid this job at three years. Mm -hmm. They thought that they could do it in three years until the crane right. crashed down and then everything else happened and we found all these utilities in the way and there was no way they could do it in three years. Right. Um, the city, who the guys who designed it at DDC thought it would take five years. Mm -hmm. Right now we're working, we're going up to like six years. May would be like, I think six years. Mm -hmm. So we're a little past what our en design engineers originally thought, but right now we're hoping that May of 2022 is the magic number and we should be. Out. I mean, I hope so, but I think that, you know, unfortunately these tenants have heard three years and then five years and now it's six uh, years and they are just, they're fit to be tied. I understand. I understand. Life is just, yeah. is completely shot. So yeah. is Liz available? Yeah, to hi, Pat. Can you hear me? How are you? Are you hearing me? Yeah, how are you? Okay, hi. I'm fine. Um, I want to say that with respect to the rats, we've really been working hard at it. Um, as you know, rats have been here long before you and I. <laughs> yeah, Same yeah. token, um, we were able to try something very... Um, experimental and a little bit, you know, today, that's up to this morning, we actually were able to do that. And okay. I was very, very happy. I won't necessarily discuss means and methods. Why? We want to hear. We're curious. <laughs> we were able to do something today that should bring some release. Now with the release, will probably come some smells. Is it the dry eyes? Yeah. Yeah. Yay! So you're using the dry <laughs> you know, ice I was really I going crazy. Come and see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I felt like the rats were on my feet whenever they complained. You know, it's not right. from a lack of trying. And, and the reality is that when I have a smorgasbord of restaurants to choose from, why right. would I eat that green bait? Right, right, exactly. You know, you know, so, and the reality is, sadly, in Manhattan, how we dispose of garbage, the regular yeah. bags, et cetera, it's not working. Yeah, the, yeah. The, Also, the other part of this that doesn't necessarily gel is that that particular block was the first block we started on because the other two blocks had issues with the crane. Right. And as a result, we started that block first, and unfortunately, because that's where all of the mishmash of um, utilities etc exist it's mm -hmm. the last and I, I i really feel layers pain and everyone on pain so whatever we can do especially going forward you know we were trying to see if we could give them a lane we're still trying to do that it's not going to happen before the the holiday as we had planned but hopefully sometime in the new year we might be able to you know really work with giving them back something Right now, you know, you know that we know that you all work very hard, and we appreciate it. Well, I know that, you know, you so, yeah, yeah. So, and I know that you've been working with them. I'm just bringing it up, you know, of because course, they because have, have to. Yeah, yeah. And Mimi actually joined Mariama and I to go on the site visit. And um, so Mimi and Mariama, I don't know if you want to add anything. Lucian, I don't know if you want to add anything. I um I I talked to DOT about. Um, removing that um, defunct, um, partially destroyed uh, bus shelter, and um, you know they they said that their street furniture unit was un you know they were uh, they didn't know they would have access. And I talked to Liz, and Liz said, "Of course they'll have access. You know they just have to talk to us. We'll make sure they have ultimate access." So I brought that back to DOT, and I'm going to be following up and really pushing for them. To get that street furniture out of there, it's it's destroyed. Um, when when bus service does resume, um, they'll need to put a new one there anyway. Right. So it's not serving any purpose there um, as it stands. So that's my yep. that's my update there. Um, I wanted to um, just before Walkman and Liz go, um, and just you all can resume on this thread. But I'll, I'll want to go block by block for the estimated finishing. Uh, months um, and of course we respect the fact that it's a it's an estimate at this point and um, uh, but I, I I do want to communicate that back via email to some of the neighbors so they have the most up to date uh, finishing estimates. Okay, right now most of the work is done within the entire uh, project except for at the location of Church Street and Worth. 
And then at the other locations at the intersections where we have traffic signals and street lights, we'll be replacing them. So we'll be working at those intersections. And I think there might be 1 or 2 of them that are like mid block that are not. You know, street lights that are not at the corners. So, the, any location where we'll be working from now on will probably be May of 2022. And everything else was completed uh, last year when we, uh, you know, finished up that area. And we just repaved the whole area recently, uh, got rid of that uh, asphalt that was put down before and, and put down new asphalt. So, this stuff is seems to be holding up a lot better than the old stuff. So, we're hopeful that this will uh, do the trick. Um, so, I'm sorry. When do you think you will close up the big gaping hole that's at the intersection of Worth and Church? We're I'm hoping that's going to be May of 2022. So that's May. that's our date right now, and we think uh, at this point that we should be able to make that. Uh, as as long as we get the uh, content to get rid of feeders, then we could do our work around them. Right, and that'll expedite stuff if they can Walkman get their feeders out there. Sorry to keep interrupting, Walkman and Liz. Is it possible to give us a week by week, one sentence? You know, yes, we're sticking to the. We can. We feel like we can still stick to that May. I or would prefer. Mm -hmm. I would prefer to do it shortly after our progress meetings, which are biweekly. Okay. Um, you know, because that would make more sense. One. Right. To right. um for this year, you're not going to get anything through the end of this year. So, uh, cause because of the way the holidays are falling, so I would say after our first progress meeting in January, I believe it's going to be the second week. Okay. I will start those biweekly updates. That should and not again, be again. It just needs to be yeah. like a sentence, you know. Yeah, no, we're I understand. Meet that deadline, or we yeah. feel like there's a new pro problem, and we're not going to meet the deadline. No, you don't even have to give us an explanation. Because you do come to the meetings, you know, but just so that they don't feel like you say may and then all of a sudden, like, 2 weeks before. Well, I, I used to do that for the block, you know, Pat, I okay. used to do that by um, by weekly update every time we had a progress meeting. And then the last time that I did it, it was when I was saying to them that we will not be able to reopen the block. That was like probably a month ago. We would not mm -hmm. be able to reopen the block. And at that point, too, I had also done the last uh, newsletter which mm -hmm. had shared that we would not be finishing before the um, before the spring of next year. So okay. but e even with that, like you said, I have no problems doing that by weekly uh, forecast, like you said, a one right. line. Thanks so much, Liz. I appreciate it. And they, they do too. So, um, all right, I guess that's enough discussion about Worth Street, unless again, anyone else has anything they oh, want I, to add. I have a comment, if that's all right. Sure, ma'am. Um, I, um, oops. Um, so when, when we did the walkthrough, I noticed that there was a lot of garbage inside of the hole at, um, where we were walking, um, on work is, is it and like, I'm, you know, I know they have like a long day and everything. Is it possible to get the construction workers to clean some of the trash out of it before they head out? We've been doing that and we've gotten a lot, um, you know, like, I don't want to say stricter, but. Um, I try to, you know, at least do a, a one week listen, guys, you know, especially going away for the weekend. Come on, let's, you know, right. so we've been, we've been, we've become more um, vigilant with respect to that. And um, they're going to be away for a week. So I will ensure, unless something, you know, because some of the trash is thrown into the pit. So right. um, barring that, if they're here, it will be clean. So even with that, even if it's not their trash, it's in the trench, we will ensure that it's cleaned. But um, after, I think it's the 22nd, they'll be gone through the new year. And I can't necessarily speak to that period. Right. But before they leave, we will ensure that it is done and it will also be addressed this week as well. Awesome, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Mariama, anything? Nope. Okay. All right. So we can move ahead. Thank you. Pat, um, we're in between projects. We got a question um, from the attendees. Um, Matt Vigiano, I'm going to unmute you. From Matt about Wall Street. Hi. I'm assuming you all can hear me. I was hoping 
Well, first to say a big hello to Liv Teast. Um, it's really great to hear your voice. Uh, I wish I could see you too, but um, for the DDC team, um, I was just hoping you might have an update on the timeline for the Trinity Place uh, reconstruction that you all are doing. Oh, there's the <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I um garbled my question in my exuberance to see Liz Baptiste. Um, I was just hoping DDC has a timeline update uh, for Trinity Place reconstruction. For re Trinity Place. Trinity. Oh, Trinity Place. Trinity. Trinity Place. Sorry, I have a head. Uh, hey, Walkman. I I think I can answer that one, Walkman. Okay. Hi, this is Frankie Lau with DDC. Um, so, so the last uh, we spoke about and we got an update on Trinity Place. Uh, I believe it's still currently in design. Uh, they're, they're not looking at construction start bid and construction start until sometime late next year, 2022. So, so we have a little bit of time. Um, I, I still don't. I don't have the specifics. I'm not sure what the contract length is. I would say I would, I would say that would be at least. I would at least 24 months for that project, uh, but I don't have specifics, like detail, detail. Uh, there's no final design yet, but uh, we can update you for the next meeting. We can try to find out some more information and update everybody for the next meeting. Sure. That would be great. Thank you so talking much. About? That's still in design. Name, Correct. Yeah. It's still in design. Yeah. No, no. Uh, what streets are we talking about? So this is Trinity, um, pretty much from from the battery all the way. I think it goes all the way up to. If I believe, if I remember, I think it all goes up to Liberty. Morris to Cedar Street. Uh, to Cedar. Uh, the Trinity Street is from Morris to Morris Street to Cedar Street, and I think at this time, seventy five percent of the design work is complete. Okay, I'm being a little crazy. Did we hear about this project before? I'm sorry, what did you say, Pat? Have I heard about this project? Because it's right at my corner. Have I heard about this project happening? We briefly, we briefly talked about it, but it was so it was so out there. We were supposed to, we were going to get back to you when we have more info. So, you know, we Probably still don't have. out of my brain because I didn't want to deal with it. So. I, I know, I know you're there. <laughs> but you just said it's 75% done already? No, design. Design. Ah. They're, still, we're, they're still planning it out yet, so there's not, nothing in the ground. Oh, so Matt, Matt, are you still there? Matt? Hold on. Uh, I may have muted him. Oh, no, he's not there anymore. Yes, he is. Hold on. Okay. Matt, I'm sorry. Matt? I don't know if I muted you, but. I am here. Hi. Okay. So why were you bringing this project up? Uh, I just hadn't heard about it since I was first told about it. So I wanted to see if there was a sense of update on the timeline. That's all. Okay. So as of right now, then it's not even. They're still in design and yes. have no clue, right? When the project will actually start. Uh, it correct. sounded like from Frankie, maybe late 2022, but that's great. And it just... will take 24 months. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Matt. We'll talk to you. I'll talk to you later. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, okay it's uh, The next project that I can talk about is uh, Vestry Street uh, between Hudson and Varick, that one block there by the Holland Tunnel. We have the, the north side of it with cobblestones all done. South side is still waiting for a section where Con Ed has to get, again, a, their feeders out of the way because otherwise it would be in the roadway. Uh, so they're still trying to get that. And apparently that one is also on the list of the urgent ones to get done. So hopefully they get it done within soon. And then we can continue on with the uh, concrete base and the cobblestones on Vestry Street. Also, we have to do like the cobblestones on the west side of Hudson on Vestry, which is just at the intersection there. It's not a lot. And then on the east side of Vestry Street by Varick, where it loops around to late, we have to do some cobblestone there, but we can't do that until all the cobblestone is done because otherwise we would make it a dead end street if we were working there. It's so narrow when it mm -hmm. goes around to Varick. So um, 
that's kind of like you, know, you have to do it in phases. Otherwise, you're locking up the road. So, right now, um, that project is uh, on the books of uh, completing in uh, April of 2022. At this point, uh, they are working, but the Con Ed is holding up uh, any more cobblestone road work. Uh, for the contractor, because they're right in the way of what they have left to do. Always so. Con Ed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know. They're in my yeah, building. We uh, had gas in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's just uh, how it works in Manhattan. So especially lower Manhattan. So. All right. So and, question about the yes. Sesame Street. Um, so you're working with those new cobblestone um, contractors. Right. And uh, Mark, are you on the phone? Is Mark here? Lucia, no. No, Mark's not here. Okay. So, you know, that it, I mean, we've had this discussion over and over again about the cobblestones and how those right. ones. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm hoping you're feeling good about these guys and what the job that they're doing. I am. I am the, uh, concrete mixes that are coming up real strong. Uh, I, we're giving them enough time for it to set and not putting traffic on it too early or anything like that. So I, I do believe that, uh, this is uh, coming out very nice, and I think it'll 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 last really a long time. Okay, cool. Uh, as cool. compared did to you have uh, some sort of agreement places. with them, right? If that, did you have like a warranty or something that if well, there's a there's like an eighteen month guarantee on our projects. So, so like when we finish the job, there's a there's a guarantee period of eighteen months that they you know have to guarantee to work. So, so we'll all do a big walkthrough 17 months after this thing is over. <laughs> 17 go. and a half months. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Okay. So that's it for Vestry Street? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, who's next? Who can talk on the, uh, let's see, what else do we have out here? Front Street? Frankie? I'm here. <laughs> okay. Your turn. All righty. Hi, everybody. Uh, so. The reconstruction of Front Street project, um, that, that project continues, um, you know, a, a, again, just like last, uh, at the last meeting, we've, you know, it's been a slow go. We've encountered a lot of, uh, an a lot of utility interference to date. So, so everything's been a slow go. Um, beginning, uh, I would say maybe early spring, the contractor is looking to bring a second crew to that location and start back at the old slip end. So we might uh, ramp up production on that job um, just to speed things up a little bit. I have two crews going at one time. But um, in terms of completion, I would say we're out. You know, the original contract completion date was uh, June of next year. Uh, I think I think it's going to be June of 23. Um, we're going to put into a time extension to get this thing uh, wow. completed. Yeah. So, you know, we've encountered a lot of, uh, you know, we encountered a lot of unforeseen issues. There's a lot of damaged sewers that uh, we've encountered that we're gonna have to repair. Um, there's a lot of steam, and there's uh, we've encountered that uh, that that wasn't on the original plan. So, right. so uh, it's been a slow go. When you open up downtown, uh, yeah, yeah. you know how it is, Pat. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, at the end of the day, you know, you're gonna get a completely rebuilt road, and uh, you're gonna have all the bells and whistles uh, under there. Right. Frankie, just tell me, is Front Street from which intersection to which intersection? This is from Oslip to John. I'm sorry, Oslip? Yep, Oslip to John Street. John. So okay. right now, right now they're uh they're continuing with the Condenison gas layout work. Uh they're pretty much down to the Fletcher Maiden Lane area. Uh -huh. Um once the once the if the contract is gonna break for the holidays and they'll be back beginning of the year, um, they're gonna go go through to John. Uh, once they do that, finish all the utility work, um, that second crew should start back on the front end, on the old slip end, and start doing trolley track work. So, right. so you know, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna be busy for the next year. Frankie, you mean they want to take a holiday vacation? Oh, I know the, the nerve of these guys. Yeah. Right? <laughs> So, All right, so, so you'll keep us updated. You'll yeah, let us yeah, you know, so but, uh, everything's been okay. Um, you know, no issues, no major issues that we've encountered. You know, medicine has been good. But it will be a year later than was originally. It will be. It will be a year later. Right. 
Okay. The original contract date. Okay. You know, I want to just put it out there, you know. I'm gonna get Anybody updated. on the board have anything they want to say? The committee? Pat, I have a question, if I may. Uh, Frankie, the, um, the, the, the broken sewers that you mentioned that needed to be replaced, what is, just to kind of put it in the positive, uh, what is the what is the 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 result when you fix those sewers? Will the residents around there receive more consistent, um, you know, service or or what 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 would you say? Like, what, what can we tell them when you say, well, we got in the street and then we were able to replace all these broken sewer segments? What what is the, the effective result of those replacements? Well, Lucian, there, there was never any issue with with you know in terms of the sewer. Um, in the area, it was just when we, you know, opened that location up, we found a section of it to be damaged. And pretty much the top of it was uh, was broken out, and there was uh, there was unidentified pipes that went right through the sewer. So, so pretty much for a full section, they were going to replace that, and you're going to get a whole new. You know, you don't have to worry about any damages to that, right? You're gonna you're gonna have a new section of sewer that's going to last, you know, years. You know, when we won't have any issues you there, and then failure, be upgraded. Like it could have failed if it hadn't been caught and replaced. You would uh, have had cave-ins probably on the road. The, the road might have caved in because correct. all the voids underneath okay. just goes into the sewer. So okay. you don't the road gets undermined, and you might have like openings in the road that might cave in on you. Okay. That's that's the one thing you can say that we're stopping that from happening. Okay, because I, I mean there has to be some large benefit by not having cracked. Uh, 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 sewers, but I just want to be able to be able to kind of uh, put that into a sentence. Okay. Well, it's not, it, it was you know to put it into perspective, it wasn't cracked. Like a whole section of the top of the sewer was missing. You know, so you know we were you know that's one thing, and then we had a, another section that had pipes going through it that nobody knew. You know, we have no clue how it got there. So we're that's why we're replacing that whole section, right? So you're you're getting a whole new. Infrastructure at that at that location in terms of sewage. Right. So they never had a problem with like when no, nobody the nobody's encountered a problem on location. You know there has never been an issue. Yeah. Um, it's just it just so happened that when we opened it up, you know that's what we found, and you know we can't leave it like that. You know right. in, in a damaged condition, we have to repair it. Right. Right. And, and I think you can also say that you know we stopped a potential uh, sewer problem because eventually it would have clogged up. Right. With the road caving into it, it would have clogged it up, and you would have had a sewer problem. But since we found it and we're fixing it, we're preventing that from happening in the future. Terrific. Great. Yeah. Thanks. That works. All right. And next. Um. Okay. Any any other questions for Front Street? No. Okay. Um. So let me move on to the Greenwich Street project. So we started our Greenwich Street project uh, early November, um, and I actually have our project team here at this meeting. So let me introduce the project team, and they can take over and introduce themselves and give you guys a brief update. Uh, Mr. Peter Roloff is the resident engineer, and Mr. Philip uh, Stafford is the community liaison. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, great. And. I think Peter's on the attendee list. He might be muted. Or maybe you want to unmute him. So, Philip, just tell us Greenwich Street from which intersection to which intersection? Greenwich Street from Barclay Street to Chambers Street. And we'll be starting, the contractor should be coming back early January to get started near the intersection of Greenwich and Barclay. So Pat, as you know, um, you know that first block um, from Barclay to to Murray, that's um, where pretty much where most a lot of the work is going to be, right? We're going to do a lot of work in front of back in New York. Uh, we're relocating the water main from that sidewalk, and we're building out that sidewalk, um, extending it out, and the building's going to come in and put in security features, um, bollards. So there's a lot of coordination that's going on, um, you know, with with us and DDC Design and and the building. So there's a lot of moving pieces and then. Um, as you know, you know, uh, Barclays Street is right the, after after the Trade Center. A lot of utilities came in, so so um, we expect a lot of utility interference that we're going to have to uh, work around. That's the corner where the hotel is, right? This is no, this is right at Barclays. This is right where 
Towel Seven is. What's there? BNY Mellon building is on the corner. Right. So where the Chase is, BNY uh, Bank in New York, BNY Mellon. Greenwich and Barclay, not Church and Barclay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes. No, no, it's okay. It's late. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, you're going to have yeah. to put salad. And so build out we mobilized um, the contractor, uh, mobilized, started doing minor work. You know, like I told you at the last meeting, you know, they're going to mobilize, but they're not going to put up, they're, they're not going to have a major uh, presence there um, during the holiday season. You know, I didn't want to have them dig everything up, you know, during the holidays. So they're going to come back after um, after the holidays. You know, they just started doing some soil sampling and some test pit work. Just get an idea of what we got. You know, we did encounter some issues with steam already, you know, the other day. So, you know, it's going to be fun. This is going to be a fun one. Okay, good. And then I'm glad the you're team enjoy it. and the team that we put together, it's a good team. It's it's a very good team. So, so you're in good hands. Great. That's Philip and Peter. Yes. So, on um, any any clue about completion date? I know this you're is, just starting. This is a 3-year contract. Okay. So, we're out um November of November of 23. Okay. But I mean, we know that oh, 24. You know, <laughs> Sorry. 24. right? 24, which will be here before, you know, it, actually, right. but we know that there, you know, there may be issues. So you'll be coming back and letting us know what's going on. We will and there are not it. any, there really aren't any residents right there. Right. There's a, a couple of residential buildings Plus as we get closer to chambers, but not, not so much on the Southern part. Yeah. Most of the work is. Yeah. 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 Okay, so, so Phil's anything? been coordinating. There's a lot of city agencies around, and then Target's there, the Whole Foods, um, uh, BMCC is there. So, you know, it's a lot of moving pieces over there as well. So, um, nice. Phil, Phil and, and, and Peter's uh, working uh, on coordinating everything, and everything's been good. Everything, everybody's been uh, very receptive so far. Great, good. Uh, committee, any solution? Committee, public questions? No? Okay. No, no, not at the time. Nothing. Philip and Peter, thank you. Thank you. We'll see you in the new year. She will. Could you good luck with Peter, us? I think good Peter is on the attendee list. He's muted. I don't He's know. He's muted on the attendee list and his hand is raised. If it's Peter Roloff. Yes, yes Peter Roloff. Roloff. Does Peter want to say something? Sorry, Peter. Hi everyone. Just wanted to say hello. This is Peter Roloff. Hi Peter. I'm the, I'm the resident engineer for DDC, uh, and uh, just happy to be working with you and uh, back in Lower Manhattan. Well, welcome. We're glad to have you. So, so Pat, just to give you, Peter's been he's worked down here before. He did uh, Park Place, you know. So he's he's been down here. You know, he knows he knows the, the Lower Manhattan area, and he knows the the. The dealing, so so we got a good one for you for this one. Good, so he know he knows the hell that we've lived through for twenty years, and he's <laughs> gonna make it as easy on us as possible, right? <laughs> well, let's not set the bar too high, but that sounds really <laughs> really good. To me. Well, welcome, Peter, and have a great holiday. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure Thanks to be so here, much. and you as well. So, Frankie and Walkman, we have next project. Okay, uh, what else do we have going on down here for Manhattan? Is that it? No, oh, that's it. I that's, think that's it. Uh, that's I it. Mean, we have a couple of things coming up in the pipeline. I don't know if you guys want to know. Sure. Um, Nassau Street. So th there's been some movement for uh, on the Nassau Street project. Uh, I think it's going to go out to bid soon. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at mid next year. I would say. And wasn't this, this was just at the intersection of. Um... This is from pine. This is from pine to maiden and, and I think Lucian, we talked about this maybe like a year ago. That uh, I think there was some issues with stakeholders that they had some concerns yeah, because. Um, I'm having a senior moment now um, on our committee on our board. She lives right there. Um, oh God. Burn? No, still... help me out, everybody. Who who's who's working on the park under the park underneath the bridge? Oh, uh, Rosa? 
Rosa, sorry, Rosa. Sorry, Rosa, if you're here. I think that's Rosa's location, isn't it? She lives on John, John Street? John yeah, she's like more twi towards like Wall Street and okay, something. I think Rosa other. does live on John. But I think she lives in my friend's building. There's a, a condo oh, on I John. Yeah. Okay. okay so Fern lives over there. Fern lives on Nassau. Okay, so yeah. she's got enough going on. We don't want to tell her about yeah, I mean, you know, Nassau, Nassau's going to have some some real um, potential traffic impacts, especially right. for businesses that, um, you know, front Nassau Street being that so narrow, they won't be able to do what they used to do. Um, any deliveries will have to probably happen <laughs> at the end of the block. And so a lot of coordinating of goods and services and movement of people um, and that's to not impact to them to too much. Yeah. So I'm sorry, um, Walkman and Frankie. So it's Pine to Maiden and it's going out to bid. And I, would so say, I would say early next year it will go out to bid. Okay. So you're talking about maybe construction start summer to maybe late summer, early okay. early fall. Okay. Well, you'll come back and give us a you know a better date when you have an idea. When we have that, we'll, you you guys would know. We trust you, Will. <laughs> Will it be like in the same area where I often see you guys already on Nassau? Uh, no, we don't have a presence on Nassau. We're like Nassau and like Nassau and John. No, no, that's not us. The that's war us, and no. John. There used to be a war and John reconstruction project, Mary Emma, that you're th you may be thinking about. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was that was Warren. Yeah. No. I mean, uh, John Street, yeah. Okay. So, anything else or any questions from anyone? Uh, well, I'd just like to make a point that Nassau Street between Maiden Lane and Spruce Street is going to be a horror zone because it's already very, it's a, a one way narrow street, and then you already have the construction that's going to, that started on the corner of Beekman and Nassau. And now you're talking about other work uh, going on um, on that street. We Nassau has been a problem for a while because all those cross streets are small streets. Beekman, Fulton, Ann Street is, well, I, I don't even want to begin to talk about well, Ann Street. The that they tore down and they're I don't know where that construction stands up. That's moment. between Fulton and John, uh, the John Street. Yeah, Fulton and John Street. They just tore, and they're going to start a construction of a building there too. So that means that at some point you guys are going to be in there, under there, because you build the the infrastructure there is seems like it's going to be totally overwhelmed because you're building two high rises on one little skinny street. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna it's gonna be a problem. And uh, and and then they just emptied out some space on Fulton Street between Broadway and and Nassau. They just em cleaned out a lot there. So that whole area, I don't know how much more it can take. Well, did he say to you? I I will assume. <laughs> you know what they say, but I will assume that you do work with DOT. Yeah, we, oh, we yes. get our working uh, stipulations from them. But, but yeah. you know, um, to double back to what you, uh, you guys were saying, a, a lot of those blocks that you uh, that was just discussed were completed already, right? So the, the blocks on Nassau north of Maiden was done under a separate project years ago. So that's, you know, we don't have to be there. Right, I think the work yeah. Nassau was done all the way from Maiden all the way up to um, past Ann Street, if I recall, up to Beekman. Okay. So, so you know, we're not going that north, right? We're going only from Pine to to Maiden. Okay. So it's pretty much we're tying in that last piece that wasn't done uh, from the previous projects. Okay, great. Right. right? So you're getting pretty so much a new road down all down the way from Beekman all the way down to Pine Street. Right. Right. Okay. Great. And you know you'll hear from us if there's a problem. We're not shy. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you will. There you go. Anything else? Any more comments, questions? If not, 
Listen, DDC team, thank you as always. It is a pleasure working with you. Um, have you a much. wonderful holiday season. Stay safe. Uh, and uh, we will see you next year. Uh, Pat, before we before we go, uh, the one project remaining that is uh, combined sewer replacement and gunniting on West Broadway, mm -hmm. oh, between yeah. and Leonard Street. Uh, West Broadway and Leonard. Yeah, West Broadway between Leonard and Thomas Street. Leonard and Thomas, okay. Yeah, that project went for uh, registration uh, end of the end of November. Okay. And so, it when is it? It's starting or it's finished? You said it's completed. No, 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 no. Yeah. It went for the registration. The contract has been awarded, oh. to, awarded, okay. to, awarded to the contractor. Okay. And we'll start start sometime next year. Okay, so next year. Okay. So next year you'll come back and you'll tell us, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just hopefully that that uh, I think it's 160 Hudson, the Western Union building. They have that scaffolding up, the real fancy looking scaffolding. Well, uh -huh. that's where we're supposed to put in our sewer right in the sidewalk area there. And under so scaffolding. You're working so, with the owner of the building? Uh where we we talked to them already. They're saying the scaffolding should be gone in like six months or so. Okay. But, and uh, you... I've heard that before. <laughs> right, right. And suppose they are not gone when you're ready to start. What happens? Uh, we could be delayed because that's like uh, main, most of the work is there. The other work that's going towards Leonard is just lining. We won't be ripping it out. We'll be putting a liner inside the old pipe. But the new construction where we're ripping out the pipe and putting in a new one, most of it, a lot of it is in the sidewalk area by that building. And how, how do they update you on, so why is there scaffolding up? They, they have to do some building work. I, I, I'm not sure what it is they're actually doing. They're, and, and do they, you have some uh, sort of, you know, are you having a liaison talk with them on a constant basis so that they're keeping you updated as to the progress of their work. Yeah, we're we're talking to them. That's how we know that they said that it'd be like hopefully six months of scaffolding to go. They should okay. be done. So we're no we'll be financial keeping touch to make sure that it's still on schedule. Is there some sort of financial incentive to get them to finish on time or for they be charged if they delay your project or there's something? Uh, there's nothing in there like that. I, that's it depends on the, if they have like a permit for like a DOB permit, a buildings permit that says it's unsafe. I forget what local law it is. That oh, wait, one. Local, local, law one. local law 11. It's, yeah, it's there's no way they can remove it until it's repaired and approved and, you know, inspected right, right. and approved. Right. So right. if they can get it done in six months, great. Right. Um, we're all working but, together though. You'll know well before you're ready to start where they stand. Oh, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm sorry. When would that start? That's like awfully close to Worth Street. It like includes Worth Street. We haven't we been torturing them for a long time now. Yeah. Uh. But that's that's just that's just the way it came out. You know, they they bid it and it's out now. So um, that's once we're out of there, they'll probably be starting up. But it's only a two block. It's only a two block project. Do you know how long that project is estimated to take? No, I'm not sure, but I don't think any project in Manhattan is less than a year and a half. It's minimal a year and a half. Mimi, I see your expression. That is hey, Mimi, I've been like not great for our residents over there because that, yeah, that's, that is like, you know, like in between those in between Leonard and Thomas is Worth Street. And so there's right. still going to be all the noise. There's still going to be all of the bads, <laughs> the bads they've been talking about this whole time. Yeah. So, wow. Well, like I said, it's a small project, but you never know what you see once you dig it up. But like part of that sewer that we're going to be putting in is actually in the sidewalk area on the west side of West Broadway. In front of that building, the 160 Broadway there, or whatever the address. 60 or Sun Street, Broadway. 160 Hudson. The Western Union is 66. Western Broadway. Union building. Yes. 160 Hudson. So Collier's, right? yeah, West 60 Hudson, Collier's International. Okay. So um, that's, that's gonna, 
that could be a problem. If the if the scaffolding is gone, it, it would make it easier for us to go in and, and put the sewer in and get out. Well, you so, can't work if the scaffolding is there, right? You can't correct. even see it. Correct. You can't do any work there at that location. Well, you'll so come that's back why in the new year. The six months is a good estimate by the building owner. Okay. All right. So again, next, you know, you'll let us know as soon as you know. That's right. Yeah. No problem. Okay. That's it. Any more yeah. questions, comments? So once again, have a great holiday and stay safe. And thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Yeah. See you next year. Have a great holiday. Yeah. Thank you, CDC friends. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy holiday, thank you, everybody. Happy holiday. Bye, happy holiday. Thanks, <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay. So we have something extra on the agenda that we will talk about later. It is um, Esther Regelson um, and some feral cats that they are. I don't know. Is it on the agenda? But we'll talk about that later. So we've completed DDC. Let's go back to the top of our agenda and go to the World Trade Center. Um, five resolution that we're looking to write, and that is going to be Mariama and Jill will take it away. And you might just want to fill people in, Mariama and Jill, just quickly on what happened with Senator Kavanaugh's. Uh, um, I'm having a moment, you know, at the Senator Kavanaugh's forum. Forum. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I just want to ask. So I was at a meeting today. I'm sorry before you start. Where they talked about extending the, um, you know, this hybrid, not hybrid, but us being on Zoom or whatever on on the internet. But one of the issues is that, and I hate to ask everybody, but one of the issues is that pe they need people to have their cameras on, and um, they they feel like it might be a hindrance to actually getting it passed to extend it because people don't have their cameras on if that makes any sense to actually see members. So if anybody feels comfortable enough in our committee, would you please turn your camera on and share your lovely presence with us? Oh, I'm like losing my mind. I didn't realize you were saying put the cameras on so we could see your faces. I didn't yes. know what you were talking about. Yes, 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 yes. There's Jimmy. I was calling you earlier, Jimmy. How are you? <laughs> If you feel comfortable, put your cameras on. If not, I understand. Okay, so Mariama and Jill, take it away. Mariama, do you, you want to start? Yes, go ahead. Michael, hi, Michael. <laughs> so um, this past Thursday, uh, um, there was really an extraordinary forum uh, hosted by uh, Coalition for 100% Affordable, Five World Trade Center, and Brian Kavanaugh, and. Uh, uh, many of our, our elected officials, including our Congressman Nadler and uh, uh, all the uh, agencies were there that are involved in five World Trade Center. And we've uh, finally uh, had a chance to really talk about affordability. That was the focus of the forum, just that subject. And um, one thing that that came out of that was that the uh, coalition was able to present several ideas for financing the building. Uh, in a way that would not drain the uh, resources of the state and the city, their affordable uh, housing pipeline of, of money, which was a concern. So several different ideas were presented and um, as well as uh, uh, an agreement with the agencies to actually sit down with the coalition and the elected and try to pursue these um, uh, different ways of looking uh, at financing it. It's a fight, it's still an uphill battle, but um, you know, what was made clear, and I, I know Mary, I'm gonna address this in a second, um, is that you know, our neighborhood has really been changed by the billions of 9-11 of dollars that have come in. They've created all these uh, sky skyscrapers, high rises, very, very expensive housing, uh, very little, minimal, minuscule affordable housing has been built in this area. We've lost extraordinary amounts uh, of affordable housing just between um, South Bridge Towers and Gateway Plaza and Independence Plaza. Um, that's just thousands and thousands of units that have been lost. 
so the the whole area is changing and um uh so the push to create much more affordable housing uh is 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 gaining a lot of traction um Mariama, do you have anything to add to that thanks bill so um jill really went into the history of affordability in the neighborhood and what we had lost and it's it's thousands and thousands of apartments people need to realize it's not just so when we hear that a new building came online and they have 60 apartments available that doesn't even put like a dent not even like a small dent into what we've lost in replacing those those apartments and that housing so there's a lot of housing insecurity in the neighborhood people are also afraid of losing their current spaces now on top of that the coalition has a desire for there to be a preference for uh, 9 11 survivors, first responders, seniors, um, and you know, our, basically our families, so our, our children too, whether they are themselves 9 11 survivors or not, because people who grew up in the neighborhood can't afford to remain here. The, the you know, the young adults or the um, adolescents, they can't afford to get their own apartments here. If, if people were still kicking their kids out of the out of the house at 18, there'd be a lot of homeless kids from Lower Manhattan outside. So um, with that in mind, I also looked into some of the actual stats and numbers to do a comparison um, ver the, of the number of different ethnic groups in New York City versus their percentage, their population in Community Board 1. And there are some huge racial disparities in Community Board 1 that we would hope to correct with an affordable tower as well. So taking into account that not everyone who's suffering a 9-11 related health impact is registered with the health program um, and that people of color often don't complete census data, what we were able to um, gather is a group, this, this number includes area workers at the time of 9-11, affected students who did not live in the area immediately surrounding the tower and of course all together this is still just a small portion of the number of people who were impacted and even health impacted by um, the terrorist attacks the federal government has designated what they call a uh, or the new york city disaster area the New York City disaster area encompasses Lower Manhattan, south of Houston Street, a wedge of Western Brooklyn, so like around the, the water, um, Dumbo, and um, um, not downtown, not like um, yeah, it would be yeah, be downtown, but mostly coastal, um, and it includes all of. Oh, we lost you, Mariama. I'm sorry, it includes all of CB1, part of CB2, because CB1 cuts off at Canal Street and the health program goes up to Houston, so that's CB2. And then a large part of CB3, where we have uh, a lot of our, our ethnic communities living in CB3, the, the greater numbers of Hispanic uh, Lower Manhattanites and, and Asian, and some Black over there too. Uh, there used to be a large like ethnic Jewish population over there that I'm not sure has remained. So anyway, um, of the following sub survivor cohorts, which would be these people, 50% were actually in the dust cloud on 9-11. So the dust cloud is, it, it's like if you were there at like 9 a.m. in the morning and you were stuck in that literal dust cloud. Um, the remaining 50% obviously came and went through the dust that was there in the aftermath in the months and, and weeks uh, following 9-11. So going to the U.S. Census site, they had information as of uh, 2019, what they were calling V2, V2019, or I guess version 2019. Got these numbers. So. The African American population, for example, of New York City is 
of the World Trade Center Health Program, 19%, but of CB1, 4.3%. So we, we need, um, obviously, some um, to increase our African-American population. And the same is true of Hispanics. Um, then this would be Hispanic non-white, so some of these could also be um, Black, but don't identify as African American, just to be clear for everybody. Uh, this is 29.1% Hispanic in New York City, 23% in the health program, only 7.9% in CB1. The Asian population has much better numbers, but, but they need housing in CB1 increased as well. 14% uh, total population in New York City, 14% in the World Trade Center Health Program, and 17.4% in CB1. So it's it's more on par, but still it's a it's a low number by comparison to this like this last one. So this would be the white non-Hispanic. 42.7% in New York City, 41% in the program and 66.9% in CB1. So this has to be corrected, and we're hoping, that, again, that we can correct it in part um, with, this, uh, with the tower. So this is based on U.S. Census 2019 numbers. The white population of New York City is up by 10% from New York City's uh, Department of Health published numbers that went from 2016 to 2018 stats while the populations of the other racial groups that were examined remained relatively the, same, relatively the same over those periods. So from 2016 to now, they're pretty much you know, the same. Those and, are extraordinary numbers. Mm -hmm. Just extraordinary. Yeah. So this um, might demonstrate that if access to lower Manhattan has increased, then it's increased for whites only. It has not increased for other people. We'd have, we can, there could be many different ways there, I would say, or this puts forth that affordability um, is, is probably the major one. African Americans, Hispanics, and or indigenous are grossly underrepresented in Community Board 1 as compared to the rest of the city, and the World Trade Center helps the private program. The indigenous 9-11 survivors and African American and Hispanic are not receiving equal benefits or access to the 9-11 related redevelopment despite equal exposure to 9-11 related toxins and equal loss of health, property, and sometimes life. Because we're putting up these buildings and the, they, these people cannot afford to live in them. So it's being sort of gifted to somebody who wasn't even affected necessarily by 9-11. The combined population percentages of non-whites amounts to a greater population than that of the whites in all areas that were examined, except for Community Board 1. So even if unintentional, the combination of planning and zoning decisions favoring big real estate and exorbitant rents and housing costs have, in effect, rendered Community Board 1 a segregated community. So we want to, obviously, um, open this up to people of color. Um, and then more specifically of those, the African-American and Hispanic populations, indigenous populations, and to 9-11 survivors and first responders at large. And we are left with a question as to how much our public agencies, how much money our public agencies are willing to put forth toward integrating Community Board 1, whereas the Civil Rights Act of 1964 ended segregation on public land, and the World Trade Center is public land, and it's, it's segregated, and will continue to be if, if we build a 75% uh, luxury tower. I just wanted to say, and thank you, Mary, I'm a, um, but you know, you know, I'm on the CAC. Everybody knows I'm on the, you know, for the World Trade Center number five. And one of the first questions that I did ask of the two uh, two um, organizations that are involved that deal with um, you know um, affordable housing, and I asked that that wasn't it possible to make people who were affected by people who live in the community and children of people who live in the community to have preferential treatment 
to occupy these apartments. And I was told because of a lawsuit that seems to be going on for quite a long time that started in another community, that would not be possible. Justine? Yeah, no, well, I'm happy to say that at the forum, they yeah. did commit to looking into making that, a, you know, yeah, a, possi I, I a possibility I for two back. reasons, Pat, for two reasons. One was because, as we made clear, you were saying for people who live in the community, that's not the criteria. We were, we're talking about people who lived in the community or worked in the community or went to the school in the community on 9-11-2001. No, but I'm saying a different group and they were very much more open to the possibility. They said that lawsuit affected or, or was, was, was giving some parameters to people who live in the community today. But we still that want our kids who live in the community today to have some preferential treatment to be able to get apartments. Say that again, Pat. I mean, we still want our kids who grew up and live in the community to still be able to be to have some preferential treatment to to apply for and possibly receive. Yes, we do. And something else too that um, Matthew in the background was pointing out to me that the, the new affordable housing that's being built right across the on, the on Barrack Street that is giving a preference to people who live in the community. So I, I something More I think affordable housing. So, so I, I, I think they give us circular answers. I was but happy. Children will fall into the parameters of 9/11 yes. survivors and their family, whether they are children that are currently here still, or, or have children like my son that had to move to the Bronx. Right. You know. I'd like yeah, to also I mean, things, and then Mara, and, if I could ask a question, because I'm sorry I jumped in on your your comment, Pat, but. My question was going to be, how is the coalition and how are you asking, what is your definition of affordable housing? Okay, before I get to that, or actually I was going to get to that, is that the coalition is looking for a range of affordable housing from the deepest, from very deep affordability through to moderate or middle. So it is a full range, but want to emphasize that it includes deep affordability and that's very important. I also want to and say permanent. and permanent. permanent. Yes, exactly. And that deep affordability would be what they're offering now, they're 25%. So you're not talking about changing that, but what you're saying is they're at 50% of AMI and we'd be looking to go even lower than that. In fact, one of the or maybe possibly two of the um, potential funding mechanisms that we're looking into would require it to be lower than 50%. That's great. That's great. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it, it's worth pointing out that the LMDC, that as Mariana well said, this is public land. This site was bought with our tax money, with HUD money. Um, the LMDC has received over $2.8 billion from HUD. We all know that stands for housing and urban development and has not built one building in this area of affordable housing, um, which was part of their mandate. And, and I know at least Tom had advocated for over a decade. So this is not something that is, is new to them. They've also, you know, Port Authority has spent Countless billions. They spent four billion dollars on the Oculus alone, where they insisted on having imported Italian marble to make it, you know, the the beautiful building that it is, but cannot come up with one single dollar to put towards affordable housing. The affordable housing that they are suggesting at 25% would be from Silverstein, and he would receive a massive tax break for doing that. So not one dollar are they putting towards affordable housing. And to that point, Jill, the day following the forum, it came out in the Gothamist that the Port Authority, who at the meeting said they really could not survive without $12.5 million annually, was going to be spending $9.5 billion at JFK in the airport. So we were our priorities, our agencies, you know, public agencies' priorities are way out of whack. And we need to uh, work to get them in order. Yep. So we want to write a rezo. And I would love it if you two could suggest the very end of the rezo and we work backwards. Pat, I just want to point out to you, you've got um, Jimmy and Francis with their hands up that I can see. 
I am terribly sorry. <laughs> I'm just ignoring you guys. Sorry. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Jump in. <laughs> Francis, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> indulge me, please. Uh, I I was uh, wondering if anybody could answer the question in terms of the uh, district lines for the community boards in Manhattan, why community board one's line stops. It does, it does not go all the way across uh, Canal Street, because if it did, it would include another whole population, which would make this area a little bit more diverse but all the other community all the other community board uh cutoff lines go straight across except for this one it's like it's carved out and the, there's a certain piece of les that's not a part of this area which is and, and that piece of oh, les that's not a part of this area is where a lot of minority people live and it would probably change our numbers drastically. Now I'm kind of thinking that maybe it is it, and I don't know. Maybe somebody can answer this question in terms of it was it because it would it would split Chinatown, or I, I don't know what the what the lines are there. Uh, would it go right through Chinatown? But every time I sit and I look at this, I look at this diagram that amazes me that it's right there that the line stops For and it, does, it would be perfect. It would be great. The whole bottom of Manhattan would be community board one, but except for that little piece that happens to be what it is. So if anybody but could but the yeah, reality help me Manhattan with that in existence uh, for many, many, many years, they didn't just, excuse me. I'm sorry. I didn't, I, I missed the first part. The reality is that that map and, and the district has been that way for many, many, many years. It isn't yeah. like it just, you know, just happened. So I, I don't know what, the, I mean, I don't know that we're going to fight a battle and get that line redrawn at this point anyway. I have a theory and I think it's because it totally follows the school districts, which also purposefully uh, seem to cut out those areas. Right. I think it's called redlining. If right. I'm not mistaken. Okay. That well, would not be a surprise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, jump okay, in. So, um, you know, I, I, I think that um, in the resolution, other than housing justice, you know, it's important to point out that affordable housing is important. It's good for business. Um, my business on one side of the Canal Street, but my employee, thank God there's a cross bridge that I tried to hire locally and I was able to have a very diverse um, team with me because they can cross the, and so what happened is that, you know, if you have a community that um, everybody has a second home elsewhere, um, you're going to have, once again, hopefully it doesn't happen, but, you know, you're going to have the lights turn off when there's another, you know, quote unquote lockdown, right? Because they, they're not really tied to community and the people that actually keep the community going, the people that comes in and, you know, keep doing the essential services, they come from elsewhere. So then that kind of defeat the purposes of a city, right? We really don't want to be the suburb when in the morning, one color train goes toward the city. And the people get off the train, looks a different color to come taking care of the kids, right? City shouldn't be that way. Should be should be different. It should be a community. And um, it's, it's, if if I don't have a form of housing nearby me, I'm gonna have a hard time keeping my office open right now. I can tell you that, right? Um, they have to travel. It costs them to travel, right? There's risk, right? There's more crime now, um, and also health reason. So, it's it makes sense for ecosystem. It need diversity, both racially and also economically. So if you have a tower like WT5, that essentially is a city in itself. You can't just have people that take, you know, and then people who serve come elsewhere, right? Then just live in Berlin, back in the Berlin embargo, right? Have Amazon send everything in, you know? You, you don't yeah. have that. You have, we have somehow in the resolution to explain to them, it only makes sense to keep this ecosystem functioning at all time, the people that serve you need a place to stay. I mean, a thousand percent. The, 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 you know, upstairs, downstairs, right? Downtown Abbey, right? The service right. live there, okay? 
Yeah. Remember yeah. that sentence, Jimmy, to add to the reso. Yeah, you're exactly yes. right. And it's for those reasons, Jimmy, that you just stated that all 72 district leaders across Manhattan have signed on to support us. The, in town, the entire county of New York has signed on to support us Good. and written yeah. a letter to the governor for, the, for those reasons. I'd Good. like to add something, Jimmy, because I was talking to a small business owner in Battery Park. He owned a small hair salon. And he said to me, I can raise people's salaries and what have you, but the one thing that will help me get good staff is the affordable housing for them to live near where they work. Right. Yeah. It's exactly the volume up a little bit, Joe. Oh, sorry. <laughs> now one more thing. You know, this is they have to realize that it's not just look at what happens in Chicago, right? The black population is decreasing in Chicago. Can you imagine that? That hasn't happened since the Civil War. And the reason is there's no more jobs. They're moving back down south. And you, that's something that you never imagined a whole neighborhood to start dying because there's nothing, there's no jobs, there's nothing to do. And you don't want that to happen because, you know, everything's go coast, right? You got, you know, it yeah. had to be an ecosystem. We need each other, you know, we, we, the people got coming to take care of you, right? You know, even the, the, the home nurse aid, right? Uh, you know, let's say that you're a rich retiree. <laughs> you know, there'll be a situation like this coming winter, like last winter, where your aid cannot physically come in. Now, what are you going to do? All right. You know. All right. So, like I said, let's, unless there are any other comments or questions, why don't we start, try to start from the bottom? We have um, Pat Gray in the, in the attendees. Pat. Hey, Pat. Lucian, can you unmute Pat Gray? I sent a request for her to unmute herself. Thanks. Hi, Pat. Um, yeah, we'll see uh, you now, Pat. Good. So, Mr. Song is is presenting examples that are so realistic and so true. We need to be a community where everybody from all economic situations can live. Um, I just, so I, I moved into Battery Park City on the February after 9-11, and I'm a member of the Coalition for Affordable World Trade Center 5. Um, I just want to add just one piece for any of you who are interested in finding out what took place last Thursday at the forum that Senator Kavanaugh held. And I can tell you that um, listeners can view the virtual forum by going to Senator Kavanaugh's website and looking um, underneath the newsroom category and his website. And you can hear the entire forum. You can hear all the speakers and all the issues that were raised. So if you feel you need to have a little more nitty gritty information than what we're giving you tonight, you can get it right there. And, and we are so pleased, the coalition, that among the speakers we had, we had, um, uh, I'm sorry, Congressman Jerry Nadler. We had Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer. We had State Representative Uline New, who all spoke in favor of this, of what the goal is to make it a 100% affordable housing at World Trade Center 5. Um, and that and that's all I'm going to say right now, but uh, obviously the coalition is so in favor of this and so many people are supporting it. It was so exciting to be there at the forum to hear people who, who maybe in the beginning when we first started, the coalition first started to propose this, thought, well, it's a nice idea, but, and who have come around to recognize that it is a realistic and very much needed idea. And that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Um, I have a question for, uh, to, to uh, put out to the committee. So the full board meeting is next Tuesday, and it seems like we might need to have some more time to write a really comprehensive and deep or do you just want to write a is it's it's up to you guys you just want to write a few sentences in support of 
or do you really want to include some of the facts and figures that Mariama and, and Jill have found? Talk, talk. Well, here's, here's the thought. Well, yes, I do want to include those. I think that it's timely because the LMDC has started a public comment period uh, on these on some of the changes they want to make and having the community board weigh in during that process, I think is more effective than after that process. So, okay. yes, while I would rather have the, a lot of more facts in it, I think getting something done in, in, in timely fashion is more important. Okay, so then I like think I said, either can be done rather quickly, to be honest with you, because we have templates, right? We have other people that have already signed on. So community board one can, you know, take the lead and maybe even some of the information from Nadler's letter, from Maloney's letter, from well, you know, the Mary Ann, County this letter. Be done by Lucian doesn't have time to do it before Tuesday. If it's going to be deep and in, in, involved, and he doesn't have time to do it, if it's going to be maybe we do too maybe we do something now that is you know that just start, again starts from the bottom and says we are in support of and have a few sentences above and then come back and do a more in depth more in depth you know. to to say why i i would vote for that because I, unless mariama you could because i really want to hear more about say more in support of uh, uh, the coalition for 100% affordable housing and five world trade center that's sufficient in and of itself right that's what i'm saying i think we could do either we could go either way if, if, no, if people are comfortable with that, that's fine support. because that that means something already right then you're some there's a website there's all the information on the website yeah. of, of what exactly coalition for affordable uh world five world trade center is so if you're in support of that that's enough or but if you want to do more there's okay. more that other people have already but done the research on then we can just pull from it even with that, though, Mariana, I think what's really um, impactful, listening, having sat through the forum and having heard you talk again today, to me, what's really most impactful is the fact that it's federal land, and we need to to shake up the racial diversity. You know, and, and, and what and Jimmy said that we need to have the people who are working working here living here, living and here, and not so much uh, affordable Excellent. housing. Housing, I mean, but but that's Those included. That, that part of it is. You guys say that in, in, in coalition, but those two things, what Mariama was saying about the racial diversity and what Jimmy was saying about the people who work here should live here. Yeah. Then the 9-11 survivors, again, just as a, okay. as a quick. So we need to get on with it. So this is why I'm saying, do you want to start at the bottom and, and yeah. get a conclusion? Those and three points. But well, let me just say, I want to, I want to, I want you guys to make it clear to me. Is it that you're in favor of the coalition? Or that you're in favor of the World Trade Center number five tower being a hundred percent affordable. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, I hear that. That that's a question that I, to me it's one and the same, but I, I'm close yeah. to it. That, well, that's why I'm asking. Is it one and the same? It's the same like, thing for me. It's one and the same, but I would I guess I would be close to it too, unbiased or whatever. But I mean, it, it we're, we're, who brought right forth here. the idea? So if you're in support of a hundred percent affordability, you're in support of the coalition. I would imagine. Yeah. Because nobody else was was bringing that idea forward. I'm just throwing it out. Just yeah, no, out. I mean, I would love to hear from the people who have been quiet, if that's okay, Pat, to see. Because, because yeah. like I said, I think that Jill, Mariama, and I, I'm close to it. I think saying it is one and the same. But that's yeah, a really good question. I mean, I want to hear from other people. Uh, yeah, we always want to hear from other people. I, I would <laughs> just, I would just say, I, 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 I would like to hear, hear, see both. You know, because I think that makes more of an impression on people. You leave it, you leaving too much room for people to assume that one is related to the other. That's just me. And I think that what Jimmy brought up was excellent in terms of the ecosystems and that we need to look at, you know, the, the, the whole process. And that's important. And I think if there's a way for us to integrate that into this resolution, you know, in terms of our feeling about the city and all of these things we're discussing. Absolutely. I think it's strong. Now, I'm just being realistic about the fact that we're not going to get it done for Tuesday unless it's a short reso. So that's why I'm saying you well, might. I agree with Jill that we should get it done for Tuesday for if at all possible. So maybe we have to go with the short reso because January 15th is, I agree. is the um, Port Authority LMDC meeting and that's before our next quality of life meeting. Right. Um, Michael, do you want to add anything or ask any questions? I, I, have, um, a, I have a question. I'm oh, sorry. Oh. Pat, did you want me to speak? 
Yeah, yeah, go, Michael. I, I'm probably, I'm most likely going to abstain on the resolution. I think I'm more, I can be more supportive of some of the diversity moves. I'm probably not going to be 100% on board for 100% affordable housing. So, uh, whatever you do, I'm likely to vote abstain. Okay. Mimi? I uh, don't completely understand the difference between the coalition and 100% affordable. I'm assuming because that's what the coalition wants, right? That's, that's why I'm asking. Is yeah, there, and I, if if the support is specifically for the coalition from, um, you know, everybody like, was it Nadler, Kavanaugh, et cetera? Um, if they're supporting the coalition, then I think it would be strong to say that we also support the coalition. If they're just supporting 100% affordable housing, um, it might be, you know what I mean? Like, like I didn't quite catch the nuance between those. That's what um, I was trying to find out, right? Yeah. yeah. Or, or Jill, do you have the letters easy access or are they on the website? I, I just want to make a suggestion that we, uh, uh, that the board supports the goals of 100% of the coalition for 100% affordable housing. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. Right. I'd also right. like to add that, um, you know, if, if we're going to stop congesting the streets and start congesting the subway, it would be good for people to be able to walk to their jobs. Yes. So, and and um, yeah. living where you work would be a huge benefit. Yeah, being able to walk to work specifically, I, I, especially if our going, MTA is going to gonna continue on the agenda. Sorry, Mimi. Right. Uh, Elizabeth, do you have anything you want to add? Elizabeth? You're muted. Okay. Detta, you have anything you want to add? Or ask? Or Detta? Pat, can I say something really quick? Sure. Oh, just one observation. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think the biggest employer in District 1 is the New York City government. I don't know. Yeah, it's just a lot of city. Oh, absolutely. A lot of, because I work in the DC 37 and our members are, right. we've got a lot of people right. in this right. area that have to come from the Northern Bronx right. in order to get down right. here right. Uh, or way out in, uh, uh, Brooklyn to get to work on time, but the yes, key, you're right. Things we can suggest is, you know, we, we, um, we want to include the public servants, right? Yes. The policemen, right? Part of the problem with policing is the police, the police the neighborhood do not live in the neighborhood. Right. They come from a different town, you know? Exactly. That's been a problem everywhere in America, right? So okay, some of this we will make a lot more friends if we invite the civil servants and the police and people who, you know, serve us and work with us. I think we'll make some more, more, we'll get more support. But if we're going to write a short reso, some of those long details we need to say for the longer reso and just do something very short just to go on record. Um, but before, so we just need to get through everybody. Um, I see that Diane Stein has her hand up. Diane? Um, I agree with, I'm trying to see how to word it, supporting both the 100% affordability and the coalition. I, I mean, I don't know how we the coalition's goals as goals. As, yeah, yeah, for 100% yeah, affordability in, in that resolution. So we can kill two birds with one snow. I mean, the thing about it is we support the goals. If they can reach 100% affordability, we'd be happy. If they don't reach 100%, we supported the goals. And that was what right. we were hoping they would do, you know. Um, I just shared Maloney's letter in the chat if it's helpful to anybody. Maybe Lucian can make sure it's shared to everybody, since I think I can only share to him. But she, the, start, she starts off her letters by saying that she supports the coalition. That's like the first line of the letter. Okay. okay. Um, let me go to Bob. Bob, anything you want to add? Okay. Well, <laughs> I was thinking about this. Um, I'm, I, at this point in this discussion, I can add some ideas at least. I think that um, that uh, Lower Manhattan is overdeveloped, and an important point to make about World Trade Center Five is that we don't need any more 
uh, high-end residential housing. I think we're right. way overbuilt. And I think someone should get the statistics for that and prove it. And I think that uh, I think that there's lots of evidence of real upscale gentrification. So this is the first living experience that I have with uh, the solid middle class people in uh, Battery Park City are really being moved out of here because uh, the the uh, because the the prices of staying here are so high and i think there's even kind of structural problems with with small people that own apartments even being able to hold on to them just because the stresses are so great so i think i think that there's i think there's tremendous economic problems going on with places like battery park city and we can uh in the longer version of this spend some time looking at how much uh, up market construction there's been and and really documenting the losses of affordable housing and i think we have some of the some of the background of that in place i think one of the things uh that's been mentioned here is that that this tip of manhattan has always had a strained and limited infrastructure and somehow or another uh adding this really should look at we should really look at the infrastructure, including transportation, where if we if the sub subways ever recover, they're really, really, really been historically extremely crowded down here, and that's going to happen again. Sanitation is a tremendous problem here. We've been fighting over schools from uh, 9 11 to today and still trying to get that uh, to work. I think that one of the ideas that uh, Tom, uh, good kind always had was the idea of artist residents, uh, that there should be a component of that in World Trade Five, and I think that's right, because we're right close to that performing arts center, and we're right in between the wonderful um, uh, Trinity Parish House, and it's a real opportunity to have uh, an artist residence kind of site like West Beth. And that should at least be rolled into even at any version of this. I, I'm interested. It's interesting to me that no one mentions it. I think it's important. Uh, so if 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 it's uh, off to the side, then let it let it be. But um, I think that also in the in the in the larger uh, uh, attempt at this, we can look at issues like uh, traffic, which is such a concern uh, to so many of us down here and and we really have to start looking at solutions about how we're going to you know loosen this up and make it possible for traffic to flow so uh and the and, final thing is that this should be treated as sacred ground and really support the the neighbors that are here so that those are the observations i have so thank you i'm going to ask everybody so i think what we've all said or what i'm hearing is that we're going to write a longer version and I think everybody should take the points that they've made and write a couple of sentences and send it in so that we can work on, maybe this is what Mariama and Jill will work on and with Lucian's help and I can jump in and help you guys write the longer version for Tuesday, which is a couple of days from now though. Let's get this shorter version so that we go on record saying data um i i don't know if you're still there if you had anything else Dada, you want Dada's add? microphone doesn't work she said ah, so okay. she's there um she she did um text or chat to me um okay what one thing i just want to bring up a couple points one is um since there are members of this committee who are members of the coalition my recommendation would be for those who are member or members of both uh recuse themselves in any vote that's you know, specifically supports um, an organization that they're part of outside of this board. Um, two, um, I'd like to know more about the, the the upcoming meeting that seems to be the impetus for the vote this month. Um, if it's a, if this meeting um, is about the change to the GPP and the and the EAS, um, Community Board One is going to craft a response to the EAS 
in January. Um, and so that will be coming out of the environmental protection committee um, to respond to the environmental uh, assessment statement. Um, so if, unless this specifically, this meeting is about the, the, the share of affordable housing, you know, I would, I would definitely, you know, would always advise you all to give yourselves the time to write the resolution that you want to stand behind. Um, if you make it piecemeal or rushed, it may not be as good. I am thrilled that uh, that this this committee is going to be putting out uh, a stand on what percent of affordability, the share of affordability, and at what depth of affordability. I think that's fantastic. I think Community Board One absolutely should have a position on that um, for this project. Um, but uh, I, I I really would urge you all to to consider whether this meeting that's upcoming is actually going to be the one where these comments need to be tendered and not somewhere down the line where having a, a more complete resolution would be more um, effective and um, lasting. So that's all I have to say. Yeah. Can I address that please? So even though the upcoming meeting is about the GPP, land uh, use is not going to be addressing affordable aspects of it. And buried in there are certain design changes that they are going to make that would preclude the building from becoming affordable. My suggestion is as follows that this quick, the quickie um, reso, it's not in support of the coalition, it is in support solely of 100% affordable housing so that everyone can sign on to it. It has only four points that it wants to make briefly uh, racial diversity, uh, it should be uh, the economic value and uh, people uh, who work uh, in this area should be able to live here and the loss of affordability uh, and that we support making the building 100% affordable for those reasons kind of and anything in the future can go into greater detail and can support the coalition. So, if we so decide. That's all. Listen, I'll recuse myself if, if necessary or if everybody that will make people feel more comfortable, but. When I was considering joining the um, Seaport Coalition, I called that um, that lawyer, you know, from the borough president's office. What's it called? The Conflict of Interest Board. Conflict of interest. Yep, I called the Conflict of Interest Board, and they told me that I could feel free to be a member and to vote if I wanted to, as long as I wasn't getting paid by them. And since I'm yeah, not getting my paid by the said. coalition for affordable five World Trade Center either, we're not even a nonprofit. A of the coalition, but do they advise you to vote as a member of the board about the coalition? They said I could vote as long as I wasn't being paid by. But but okay. uh, Jill is. I wasn't making any money off of the Seaport Coalition, so I'm Thank not making you. any money off of this either. Mariama and Lucian, Jill is proposing that we change the wording to be in support of 100% affordability and not to be in faith, which is why I was kind of asking earlier. I didn't think about the conflict, but I was just asking if it, if it really, you know, if, if it's different. So if we write a reso that's in favor of 100% affordability at World Trade Center number five, and, and it doesn't say, you know, in favor of the, of, the, of the coalition, then there's no reason why you can't vote. Question, two things, if I may. Um, if we add to what Jill said, uh, a preference for 9-11 survivors, responders, their children, and seniors, I think, if we, or whoever, we want to throw that in there, people who were here on 9-11. Forget the seniors part, but 9-11 um, survivors, responders, and their children. So that, cut, that gets in there, the first responders, as well as people who lived here on 9-11. But I also want to say, Lucian, I want to push back, because there's no financial interest for anybody on the coalition involved in this. Again, if we change it. I, be... I was just recommending it because if no one's checked ahead of time for this particular vote, then it's always going to be my recommendation to err on the side of safety. However, everyone's free to vote as they wish. Yeah, I didn't check for this coalition, but I, no, I but definitely, I was, I was concerned about it with, when I was going to join the Seaport Coalition. So I've always been a member of Save the Museum. And, and so I called and the gentleman said, if you're not making any money, I said, well, I do live in the co-op across the street. I, I, it's a co-op apartment, so I could be affected maybe by interest, right, or taxes or something. And he said, no, like you're not making any it's money. It's a correct financial yes. interest. Exactly. And, and, in favor and so, of but moving it's this also forward. worth looking into to get an answer, but. Right. We're in favor of moving this forward. If we vote in favor of 100% affordability at, 100, at the Five World Trade Center site, and then the next 
you guys can go and look everything up. And then for the longer rezo, we can, you know, vote in favor of the coalition's position of of 100% affordability so that you won't have to worry for this shorter rezo about being a member of the coalition. And we can just get it done. And that's what I would suggest. And not have to worry about quorum. All right, so Jill. Yes. You want to, and so that was a friendly amendment, Justine. Yes, please. Jill. So do you want Jill to you want to give it to Jill again? So Jill, I would add to your list just that we want a preference for 9-11 survivors, responders, and their children. Yeah. How about something like whereas five World Trade Centers should be housing that is inclusive and represents the diversity of the entire city, that includes deep affordability, housing for essential workers. Uh, Single, uh, inc and includes housing for 9 11 survivors and first responders and their children. And the, well, they're, they're the children are survivors. That's true. Mariam, you're on mute. I said most of them probably are. That I would imagine there could be some that aren't that were mm -hmm. born after what was it, uh, July 2002? The number I got last week from the uh, yeah, it was July website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but aren't like in vitro considered survivors? So this don't know. Yeah. Before July two thousand two, yes. Okay. All right. So next sense next uh where is? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh let's see. Uh whereas um uh Lower Manhattan is losing its limited stock of affordable apartments at an astonishing rate. Uh, public money was used to subsidize uh, luxury market rate apartments and existing low and middle income rentals were lost. I could talk about, I could list the three, you know, three examples or not. But I think I would say Dave, that we have not, it not is losing. We have lost. Yeah. And yeah. That's more lost. definitive. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. to keep this short. And we'll yep. go into greater detail with the next one. So, whereas we have lost a, a, a huge majority of our afford what once was affordable housing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you can go back. I mean, it just needs to be in enough shape for us to vote on right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Should I mention, um, uh, you know, anything about Independence Plaza and Southbridge, you know, I'm South saying South. I would go back and do that for the next one. We're trying to keep this short. Got it. Okay. Sounds good. So uh, next slide. Yeah. And then I think we need to add in the whereas um, that Jimmy was talking about. About municipal employees. Yes. You want to. Or was it the diversity of the um, economic diversity and racial diversity? Okay, I'm going to turn over to um, Mariamla to add those. Well, we didn't need all those facts and figures. No, but just well, whatever can I, uh, or, can I just say yeah. something uh, that um, I know that there is a, a, a municipal housing program that is supposed to be except extended to all municipal employees and they're supposed to get a certain percentage of uh subsidized housing um in in the city so in terms of including municipal employees there somebody might say well there's already a program for them but it's like where so small. but they, they they put them someplace else they don't put them all here right that's what we're saying yeah, we put them it's just that there's a program i, I think it's part of the general there. breakdown there's a set of right. they used i mean there used right. to be i know a set aside like five percent of units were set aside for municipal employees whenever there's a, like an affordable restricted but that may not be the case anymore it certainly was when i got my housing uh, before i was a municipal employee uh, i do recall that there was, uh, I think the program is still in existence. Well, well, a number of municipal employees are going to be 9-11 survivors already. They they were they were down here. They're survivors. But it's important to point out that well, this, this is not a city. This is not a city program. This is a state mm -hmm. development. So you should be really. Um, I think it's good to be mm -hmm. more complete about what set asides you'd like because I don't think there's anything that's necessarily going to 
be included by by fiat of the city. And that's for the longer Rezo. We need to move it along. I'm sorry, guys. It's already quarter to eight. Next point, Jill. Uh, okay, so the two remaining points are one about diversity uh, and uh, then the economic uh, uh, impact. Do you, Mary, I'm gonna have some language that I can pull up. Something that I've used before, unless Mariana, you have. When you say the diversity, this are we going back to Jimmy's? Um... No, we're talking about just the racial um, makeup of it. Um, let's see. Uh, I have some, uh, blah, blah, blah. It could be something like, um, and, and I'm just going to paraphrase it, and then something like, you know, in, in making this tower. Um, with different types of affordability, it allows um, a greater economic mi mix and racial mixture. We could say in an area that has become overwhelmingly wealthy, white, and way too unaffordable. That's 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 nice. Alliteration. Nice. Those that's are the facts. <laughs> the facts, but I, I I don't know how you I I don't know how I feel about that. What do you guys? Uh, it's true. Yeah, it's, it's, true. It, it's true. And it's like slickly it. stated uh, and memorable. Yes, right. I mean, Jimmy, <laughs> you agree? Yeah. No, 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 no. No, I, I believe in we we want to achieve an objective, right? I mean, we actually want to get this done, and that's how I was thinking that you know, you know, since the honestly, I think the biggest employer in District One is New York City and not Goldman Sachs, right? And you can look at the 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 the. The makeup, the demographic of public servants is definitely much more diverse than so in general, by just look at the people, what were they where they work, what kind of job they do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and that kind of thing. I think diversity will naturally happen. So that's why I'm thinking that if we include somehow include the public servants, um, you know. Maybe well, they're included because we're it's 9 11 survivors and first responders. Yes, yeah. and, and that's really good because it makes even more meaningful for WT5 because now it becomes a living monument, right? But guys, what's, here, here's my... what's better than eternal feeling when just these are the people that come to live on in that mm -hmm. building, right? But by, yeah. by making it again, by making by having different uh, uh, uh you have to reward it amounts of, of affordability or you know, you are increasing the, the racial. And the economic diversity, and I think diversity. That's the hope. Yes, diversity is the word to use. You know, it's a little more politic than. Yeah. So, yeah. fifteen hundred affordable units will provide much needed diversity to uh, uh, our community. Do you want to say economic and racial diversity? Okay. That's what Jimmy brought up earlier. Yeah. Well, I also want to talk specifically about business, supporting business, but uh, 1300 uh, affordable units will provide much needed economic and racial diversity and provide uh, local business. Right? Okay. The, uh, the, uh, to I, our yeah, the, community yeah. that's becoming overwhelming, you know, uh, where our apartments are have become overwhelmingly expensive. You can find a nice word to say it, but the fact of the matter is the census was done. And we have a problem in community board one that needs to be rectified. But we can do that in the longer in the longer in the longer rezo. You can bring up your facts that you presented to the forum, you know. And in this one, we're just trying to make our points quick and succinctly, just so we're on record. And then you, I think you should bring up your facts in the longer one because those were some good facts you brought up. To, to bring the human capital that's needed for the business community to revitalize the city of New York. And again, I, I, uh, I'm not sure, do we need to put the business part in this short one instead of in the long one? You're I mean, already it's important. We can submit it. We could push facts behind it in the longer resolution, but I think it's important. 1300 affordable units will provide much needed economic and racial diversity to our community as well as benefit small business owners 
and their employees. Uh, you know what? I, I personally need to see it. I'm much better when I look at it okay. and, and that I can help. Jimmy, yeah. do you want to just shoot, give me a sentence? How affordable housing is good for business. Well, it's not just small business, right? The business community, it will, it will provide a human capital that's needed for the business community, right? Yeah. I, don't a like diverse the work, I mean, what business community wants really is a diverse, capable workforce, workforce right? Affordable. So in that sentence of diversity, you could say something, you know, you yes. can include it in that sentence. Yeah. The, the economic and the racial uh, diversity for both living and workforce or something to that. Yeah, yeah. Affordable housing is good for local businesses. But, you know, in district one, the local business, a lot of them are actually global business, you know, and they'll be very, very happy to have a workforce that they can tap on. Yeah. Uh, that's local. It's good for um, um, the workforce, the downtown workforce. That's what I'm saying. I, I think let's just okay. kind of get the essence of it yeah. and then we'll vote on it and then we'll send it out and we can do a little editing if we need to before the meeting. Okay. And, and in the longer one, we can, we, we can cite specific examples. Right. Right. Of, of of what we mean, because in terms of services, we we want school crossing guards to be able to live in the community so right. that they can get up in the morning right. and go and do yeah. their job in the morning. Why are we sending so, this one too? Yeah, and then we include essential workers like people who work in the supermarkets and, and pharmacies. You know, if they can, you know, especially oh, now. Thanks. To have those people living in Independence Plaza, you know, right? Um, mm -hmm. Ablution. To whom are we sending this short version? Yeah, I'm gonna say, Mariama, ask the question. To, to whom I would send it? Just to the, I'd send it to the Port Authority, to Silverstein, and to ESD, I suppose. If, I mean, yeah, the electeds, right? To the electeds. Yeah, oh, yeah, all the electeds, but yes. Um, but if you want to lodge this as a comment, um, mm -hmm. then. Okay, I'm sorry to be a nudge. It's 749. We still have two more topics. Okay, so we have those three points, and then the therefore we support 100% affordability at Five World Trade Center. Yes. Okay. So now could you just basically read it again? Yeah. Okay, it doesn't make sense, but whereas Five World Trade Center should be housing that is inclusive and represents the diversity. Sorry, Joe, we can't hear you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Whereas five world trade centers should be housing that is inclusive and represents the diversity of the entire city that includes deep affordability housing for essential workers and public servants and includes housing for 9 11 survivors and 1st responders. Whereas we have lost a large majority of what was lower Manhattan's limited stock of affordable apartments at an astonishing rate. Public money was used to subsidize luxury market rate apartments and existing low and middle income rentals were lost. I can, you know, fuss with that. Um, whereas 1300 affordable apart units will provide much needed economic and racial diversity to our community. Um, therefore, we support 100% uh, affordability at Five World Trade Center. Do we need to say whereas LMDC money is 9-11 money? And that's why we're, you know. I think so. Okay, so that would should be as part of the, therefore we support on public land. Hmm. Don't get too deep. I'm not. That's what I was going to say. At, maybe we just say at the site. So this okay. way it's get passed and we have at least, you know, the rezo. All right, I'll clean up Does the language. Does everybody on the committee understand the rezo? Yeah, I'm not seeing head shaking except. <laughs> okay, everybody. And question. Dead is going to put it in the chat whether she she gets it or not, right? But it's okay. Dead is going to have to put it in the chat whether she votes votes yes or no. Anybody want to have any comment before we vote on it? Uh, to, just just to clarify, to right now with the current status of open meetings law. You're going to need the vote to have to come in by voice, but data is not in this committee. So, 
it's okay. But we need to hear yeah. someone affirmatively vote. For the I, record. I, we have a quorum for our committee, right? Yeah. Let me just double check. Uh, but I believe we do. Yeah, Let's see. We've got yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have quorum. Yes, we have quorum. Okay. So before we lose quorum, we're re are we ready to vote? Let's double check that I don't have any of our members in the. We have Betty. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Betty needs to come in. Okay. People sneak up on me in the attendee <laughs> section. Betty? Different window. Hi, Betty. Public members considered part of the quorum, or how does that work? Uh, committee members are part of quorum, but if, if you're not on the committee, but you're a member of the board or another committee as a public member, public member? No. you could you contribute to quorum as a public member of this committee. You're, you're a member of our. Is Betty there? Betty? I am. Hi. Did you get to hear any of this discussion? Uh, yes, I came after the Battery Park City uh, resiliency. Oh, okay. So you see that we're writing a short reso in support of 100% affordability at the World Trade Center 5 site. We're, got, we're intending to write a longer reso with more facts and figures later, but we just want to go on record. Um, while the comment set, set session is open, we want to just go on record as supporting that position. Okay, then you can, you know, you'll vote whatever way you want. All right, so are we ready to vote? Any other issues? No? Okay. I guess we could do it the way we used we have been doing it now. If uh are there any anyone against? Anyone abstain? I think he said we needed a roll call. Oh. I didn't Is that what you said, Lucian? I always prefer roll calls just oh, to see oh, who's okay. present. But okay. It, it's okay. I mean no, 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 uh, we can do a roll call. We, we do, do a roll call for full board um, to really verify who's there at the mm -hmm. beginning and who's there at the end. We can um, do a roll call. But, yeah. Okay. So you want to call the names or you want me sure. to call? Uh, Pat? Yes, in support. Mariama? Yes. Justine? Yes. Francis? Francis? No, you're there, Francis. We didn't hear you. I'm going to come back around. Yes. Oh, okay. There you are. Uh, Mimi? Yes. Betty? Abstain. I'm sorry, say it again. Abstain. Abstain. Thank you. Kettering? Abstain. Schneck? Yes. Lewinson? Yes. Sung? Yes. And let me just get down to our board good members. Kind. Good kind? Yes. And Stein? Yes. All right. The motion carries. Okay. So, um, Jill, would you just type up something, send it out to us, and we all can do a little bit of editing on it before yes. Tuesday? Yes. Just to clean it up. It's going to stay basically the same. We're just going to clean it up a little bit. Yep. Uh, Jill, can I send you a template? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And then. Thank you. Uh, so if we discuss this again next month, though, it's still going to be the same problem about getting it in time to write a full reso. So should we start to work on the full reso before, like, like right after this meeting? Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. We should start to work on the full reso and present it to the committee as opposed to doing it this way. Great idea. Well, the committee yes. has already tonight decided that they agree to do a, a, another reso. So I'm saying we won't have be time. totally on the up and up. <laughs> I think we should make a formal arrangement for everyone to send in some language for right. that. That's what I was saying. So everybody should send anyone who contributed and has a sentence or two that they wanted. Mariama's got all the facts and numbers. Um, Jimmy, you had some really great language about echo systems and, you know, um, Anybody who had any language that they wanted to add, you should send it in. Cece, uh, Mariama, and Jill, and Lucian, and myself. And then we could start to write the rezo so that when we come to the meeting next month, we have the rezo written and we can just edit. Mm -hmm. Because we have to be able to be... Uh, so I'm going to jump from that to, has, has everybody thought about what came up last month about moving our meeting 
to Wednesday nights instead of Thursday nights? Anybody, did, did everybody hear what the proposal was? Okay, I'll just reiterate it again. So, borough boards happen on Thursday. Whenever um, Tammy goes to the borough board meeting, like she did today, we haven't met yet because we don't meet until the night. She goes in the 8.30 in the morning and we don't meet until, you know, Thursday night. So anything that we wanted to contribute to any topic that's pertinent for the month, we haven't opined on yet. So I was, uh, Lucian actually suggested that we move our meeting to Wednesday night so that we will be in the mix, the conversation for, um, for um, Tammy to take our opinions along with everybody else on the board to the Thursday morning borough board meeting. The issue is, does anyone on our committee have a problem switching Wednesday and Thursday night? The only conflict I see potentially is with licensing, because licensing is on Wednesday. No, but we're if gonna, they, no. Executive is always the third Thursday, uh, Wednesday, and quality of life is always the third Thursday. We're just going to switch those two days. Oh, oh okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna meet the third. We would meet the third Wednesday. Right. It would still be okay. Right. It would still be the same two days. Withdrawing. So, anybody have any problem with meeting on Wednesday as opposed to mm -hmm. Thursday? No, nope. I call the question if that's what's the appropriate process. I, I mean, I don't know that we need to vote on it. I just need to know if anybody had any real issues with it. If not, then as of January, no, no necessary. Yeah, as of January, we're going to meet on Wednesday night. Sorry, we're starting in January. We will be meeting on the third Wednesday night of the month. Okay, and that will be reflected on the calendar. And so, one of our items on our for January will be a discussion of the World Trade Center five longer reso. Okay, so now January nineteenth. Yeah, so moving right along, we have. Um, oh, what was the public safety update? Did we have Officer Nelson coming? He said that he would, you know, try to make it if if possible. So I, I just made sure to put it on the um, on the agenda. Um, okay. But so I, let's he did, really he see if he can come, come next month. It, you know. Yeah. Let's see if he can come next month. Does anyone have anything that's? Did anyone get a chance to go to the? Unfortunately, the first precinct uh, community council meetings are now going to be in public, uh, be in person. And I was not able to, it was on a Thursday night. And as you all know, I'm in Queens with mom. So I was not able to go. Did anybody go? Okay. Does anyone have any issues that should come up to the uh, 1st precinct? All right. So we'll ask him to come for next month and we'll put him on the agenda. Pat, I just want to um, go over a couple of items that he brought up at district service cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, just so that the committee is also briefed. Um, year over year. Uh, crime is up from 2020, uh, uh, but you know I think that it's important to look at it in context. Uh, 2020, a, a good portion of it was in lockdown. Uh, there's a lot of people off the street. Um, just, you know, generally um, makes for much different conditions. Um, if you look at 2020 versus 2019, let's see, 2021 versus 2020, there's an increase in crime. If you look at 2021 versus 2019, essentially it's flat. So, but the local crime that is notable, there's two there's there's two types of grand theft auto that I really want to make sure that people are aware of. And I'm going to I'm going to say this a full board as well because it's worthwhile, but since you are the core public safety element of this board, I want to make sure that this is really underlined. The two types of grand theft auto that the first precinct is seeing is one, people are stealing motorcycles out of Battery Park City. They're stealing them because they can just pick them up and put them in the back of a box truck. So if the motorcycle is not literally chained to something, it can be taken away. So something to think about, something to tell neighbors who have a motorcycle, um, that it needs, there needs to be more elements of security for it. Number two, and this is a citywide issue, but it's not, it's not, uh, 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 CB1 is no, um, uh, it's not immune to this, but people are, are are leaving their keys in their car when they're running into the store. So, oh, I'm just going to pull over here and just jump in the store, buy something. Someone will jump in the car and drive away. And it's not 
simply keys in the ignition. There's a lot of cars these days that don't have an ignition to put keys into. Um, some people leave their car running, their keys in their pocket, and they think that their car is not drivable. That is not the case. You can still jump in and drive the car away, even if the keys are in your pocket, if the car is on. And I know that for a fact because it happened to my friend. Um, uh, and I wish I would have said something to him before because I, I, I had heard about this. But so to tell everyone that even if you have uh, a keyless ignition, if you walk out of your vehicle with the vehicle on, it is it is possible to take it away from you. So that's that's the the underlying thing. It's extremely preventable. And uh, I hope it happens to no one, but please spread the word on that. I also have the MTA looking at, um, there was a, a crime that was reported uh, that was observed by one of our board members um, in the subway at Bowling Green. There was a, a, an emotionally disturbed individual who was, um, who made contact with a number of strap hangers. Um, and the, the, the board member had informed the, um, what do you call the person in the middle of the train? The conductor, and um, and, and the question was, what is the conductor expected to do if you tell the conductor that you've witnessed a crime and that crimes may be ongoing? The conductor is supposed to radio the police, and the police hopefully will be waiting at the next station or the station after that. So it is good practice to let the conductor know if you witness uh, a crime or a crime in action, or if you suspect that someone is going to commit a crime. Um, because they're, you know, just talking about being violent. Um, telling the conductor is a good practice and they're supposed to say something. If they don't, you know, let me know. We'll try to make sure that, you know, they are reminded of their duties. But again, say something, see something, say something, et cetera, et cetera. So I got that. Yep. That that was it. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, yep. let me throw the um the agenda back up for you. Okay, so now the next thing I think we should do is Esther's group. Is Esther on? Yeah, let me pull everybody over. Okay, just Esther will explain the issue, but it's about some feral cats that are over at the seaport, and um, this will be explained to you. Esther, um, tell me who else I'm bringing over. You should be able to unmute yourself now. Who is it? EDC that wants a, a reso from us? Yeah, EDC requested a uh, uh, CB consultation. Um, if you hello, can you also... hear me? Hi, Esther. Hi. Hi. Who else uh, uh, is joining um, you? Uh, I have uh, Chris, Kristen Bradfield with me, another volunteer uh -huh. who can speak to this issue. Um, I'll try to do most of the talking and be as brief as possible to get us through okay. this quickly. Okay. And Kristen can add to it if I'm missing something, which is very likely as I rush everyone through. Moved over, Pat. Great. Hi, Esther. Hi. Hi, everyone. Can I speak now? Or go. Okay. Good to see everyone. Thank you for squeezing us in. Um, so my name is Esther Regelson. I live in the neighborhood. I trap cats on the side when I'm not working. Um, and I'm speaking on behalf of a group of volunteers who are supported by Neighborhood Cats, a not-for-profit 501c3 animal welfare organization that focus on TNR, which is trap, neuter, return. So you trap a cat, you fix it, and you deworm it, and you give it a rabies shot, and you release it to where it lived before, and then you continue to feed it and take care of it until it's gone, it you know, lives its life. So that's that's how we do TNR. It's a very humane and successful program to reduce the number of feral and free roaming cats. And if you don't know what a feral cat is, it's basically a cat that has no contact with humans, gets shy and or aggressive, and turns to a sort of a semi-wild state. So uh, we discovered these cats last uh, winter spring. We uh, immediately started trapping them. We prevented at least six litters from happening that we know of. Uh, we trapped eight cats, six were female, two were male. And we uh, got volunteers together to help us do feedings every day. 
So what's been happening, it's on the fish market site and the fish market was just torn down. Uh, winter is coming. We had to release them back because we have no place else to put them. We're, we live in New York, we live in tiny apartments. There is no place for these cats. They're not adoptable, they're feral. So uh, with that, we need to put shelters up so they will not freeze in the cold because what you know about cats having fur coats is not enough to keep them warm. If there's a vicious snowstorm or ice, they get wet, they get cold and they get hypothermia just like humans do and they die. So we've talked to the EDC. We want we have shelters ready to go. We want to put them on the seaport site. Um, they want us to get your support to do that because uh, there are legal issues about being on the site, and we really these cats really need a place to shelter now. The uh, the fish market site is now torn down, and we don't know where they're sheltering, and it's probably not going to be warm enough when the weather gets cold and it will get cold. I'm so sorry, Esther, Esther yes. when you say fish market site, is it the new building site? No. Uh it's, it's uh, sorry, Kristen. It's the, the fish market that was torn down. Okay. It's, it's now a it's empty site. Vacant okay? the vacant the new lot. building. The sorry? New building, right? It was the new building. It was called the yeah. new market. Yes. Yeah, right. The market former building site. The former yes. new market so site. When we that's, write the rest, though, we need to write it as the new market building site. Okay. No, they, they they also go back and forth to the tin uh, building, but uh, the tin building is going to open up very soon. And if they clean that site up, there will definitely be no place for those cats to hide or shelter right. as well. So this is a sort of an emergency situation, which is why we insisted and hoped and thank you for having us tonight because uh it's really needs to be addressed quickly so we can shelter these cats as soon as and possible. so now edc wanted you to come to us and get us to write a rezo in support of a rezo or a letter of support uh -huh. um, asking them to please um do something helpful for these cats so they can well, survive they, the winter they why or did they say outright that if we supported it they would allow you to put the shelters on their site they, they did not sorry kristen uh kristen why don't you speak they they felt sure. that because it is a contentious site which we're all well aware of and also just with liability and legal issues of of allowing anyone to go out there they they felt that it would be an easier hurdle for them to get over internally if they had community support so they urged us to get the support of community board one. We also did receive support from deputy borough president, James Katz, and he reached out to them on our behalf. So we're really trying to give them uh, as much ammunition as possible to get this approved because it seems like a I guess I'm asking uh, when you say get this approved, let me preface all this with I'm a cat lady, so I'm in support. Yay. Go ahead. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> right. But so our support, does that mean well, when they say, you know, support, does that mean that if you are hurt on their property, they're going to their insurance is gonna cover? No. No, not at all. So they you're, they're you're really just trying to make a case that the community thinks this is a good thing for us to do. We're not, I mean, we don't really even need access. Access to you're breaking up one person tops or we send a person and we just direct it's not about us getting access to the site we just want those shelters to be placed on that property in, in a quick manner and they're just trying to they have to go to a lawyer and convince a lawyer that you know this is something that's good for us to do uh, for the community yes, what i'm saying is that if you get hurt on their site are they going to be responsible well that's I, I would we imagine have we would have to sign to them, papers. Yes, and but we did have expressed to them that they can install it themselves with our instruction if necessary. It's a one, it's a one and done. Mm -hmm. They okay, set so, it up and walk away. So it's not about you guys having access to the site. It's about you being allowed the shelters being allowed on the site. Yes. Okay, that's number Pretty one. Pretty much yes. that's number one. The main okay. Because you guys did not waive any kind of, you didn't say, oh, it, you know, if we go on your site and we get hurt, we're, you don't have to be responsible. I mean, we're, I'm willing to perfectly willing to sign that if it's offered. I mean, whatever. They haven't asked you to, no, is what I'm saying. No, they okay. haven't asked. So it's really There's just pictures about, of the yeah. shelters below, by the way. 
Okay, Thank great. You, you see the pictures, everybody? So it's really just about being allowed to put these shelters on the site. Yes, pretty much. Okay. okay. So that's straight. Now, questions? Committee? I, I just want to add, Pat, oh. I just want to add a little something. I, I, I spoke with the uh, EDC as well. Um, I think that there's, you know, I think that they, they, they want to be supportive to the extent they can be. And I think uh, Esther, Esther's right. Um, you know, they have to convince their lawyers uh to do this and so i think one thing that the committee needs to be specific about is the duration um that you know one thing the edc needs to know is that these are not going to turn into you know a, a request by the committee the community board to be a permanent shelter so what is the what yes. is the you know the minimum amount of, of time necessary okay. to save save these feral cats and, and keep them from from freezing to death okay um, so let me, what is let me... the number and then that you you helpfully provided the dimensions of the shelters, which yes. I can include into can the into the resolution. I can recite that to you too. Okay, yeah. uh, let me let me quickly uh, address that. Uh, first of all, we we mainly hope to have the shelters up through the winter. That is the main concern. Once winter is over and the weather starts to warm up in preferably late March, uh, we can remove the shelters. Um, the other thing is we're starting a campaign. We're doing a GoFundMe to try to relocate the cats. It's almost impossible to do that in the winter because they need to be sheltered in a crate. And when it's cold, you can't really do that. We have to find places for them. If you take them to sanctuaries, it can cost like over $1,000 per cat to bring them to a sanctuary. So we have a lot of work to do to relocate those, those cats in the spring, and we don't want to do it in the winter. Uh, uh, this caught up with us. We're all volunteers. We work full time. We had no time to address these issues beforehand. Our main goal was to neuter those cats so they wouldn't multiply, which we did. Okay, so let's so, have some questions from the committee. Wait, I'll just give you the dimensions of the shell of the these shelters. They're 31 inches long by 16 inches wide and 16 inches high. And we have four or five of them to put out. Two cats can go in each shelter. And as you can see by the picture, we set them up face to face and cover them so the snow won't get in. And they have straw inside to keep them warm. That's okay, can I ask a question? Okay. Yeah, whoever that is. Is that Michael? Yeah. Yeah, go uh, for it. I'm sorry if I if I maybe I didn't hear it, but I'm just wondering since you're going to the trouble of 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 getting ca capturing the feral cats and and deworming them and neutering them. Are you also giving them rabies shots or other kind of um, yes. inoculations? Yes. Okay. That was my question. They've had rabies shots. Thank you. I, I have a question. May I? Mm -hmm. yes. Go for it. Um, so how many cats are there, if you know? Well, we, there are eight that we have trapped that we know of that we see regularly, although one we haven't seen in a few months and we worry. So, but, you, um, so there's eight cats. So you're looking at how many shelters? We have uh, two cats per shelter. We have four okay. shelters and an extra if we determine that. We and, need that. and and the EDC, whoever, whoever is running the site there and doing the construction would be putting the shelters where it would be safe that would not be with the construction. It would not. Interfere. Well, right now, the, the site is fallow. It's empty and nothing's happening, although they have said they're putting up a new wall there. So we have to put it out of the way of anything that's going to happen there in the next five months. And then, um, hopefully, away from the wind or sheltered from the wind, so that uh, they can be safe and not in the way of anything else. And what I guess if if you guys are going to get on the site to put these up, what security are they giving you? It's well, a pretty empty, desolate spot. We don't it's, know if they're going to allow us on the site or not. Yeah, they, but they if, can if if so, you know, we'll work it out. I mean, that's sort of. Unfortunately, I don't know how to answer that yet because yeah. we haven't spoken to them exactly. fully. We haven't. We need to speak to them again about that. I just want to jump in, Esther. So if mm -hmm. the, if they don't allow you to go on the site, but they put the shelters up for right. you, but you said you have to feed the cats. So how would you yes. feed the cats if you're not allowed to go on well, the site? That actually is another challenge. We we're focusing on the shelters because that's the most emergent thing that needs to be done. We have been feeding them every day. There, there was a little hole in the wall where we were feeding them and it keeps shifting and they keep fencing off different areas and we keep having to find new places 
to leave food for them. And so that is a concern, but we're working on that too. And we will be talking to EDC about that. We probably will not be able to feed them on that site, but we hope that there will be some place that's open for us to reach, get to get the food to them. We okay. don't know what that's going to be yet. Right, right. Next question. Pick up Betty. Yes. Hand up? I would stay away from very generic, uh, very specific comments because I think they tend to be more harmful than helpful. Mm -hmm. I mm. think the intent is a good one. So I would prefer that it be done to support their intent and urge the EDC to find a way to keep the feral cats warm over the winter and away from active construction that could harm them. I'm sorry, Betty, when you say to keep them away, so do, not mentioning the shelters? I think being prescriptive and say we want these exact shelters is more harmful than positive. But aren't we, we very aren't, well say, you know what, this group has come up with something that works. Let's use what they already have. That's they what I was going to say, say because it's a specific. You know what, there's a liability. So let's put this kind of construction to preserve for warmth. Why do we want to be so prescriptive as if there's only one way to do it? No, 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 but I, I'm still not following. I'm sorry, Betty. If this group is the group that's doing it and they have these shelters. Until EDC is actively working there. Yes. I, uh, it, it's it's okay to be generic, except I, I do want to point out that um, neighborhood cats who we're working with, and Meredith Weiss couldn't be here. She she practically runs neighborhood cats and lives very close by and helps us feed and everything else. She's our leader in this. They do this. This is their job. Neighborhood cats does TNR. They, they do education programs to manage feral colonies and keep them fed and sheltered through the winter. They give shelters out. They sell shelters to people. So they're experts in this. They know what they're doing. More than I anyone understand else. that, but you're not listening to what I'm saying. I heard what, what you I'm said. saying is the EDC, if their objection for legal or other reasons happens to be this particular structure, why are we as a group supporting only not what's being accomplished, but the structure itself? But they're not so objecting saying, to the structure. Uh, we don't know what they're doing because they haven't weighed in. Wait, wait, just uh, so EDC, EDC did tell us. The structure was not a problem. It's it's just granting members of the public access to that site. That site right. is not, and it's not open to the public. They did confirm there's no construction happening except for potentially a semi-permanent fence because it's going to be a long time before that property is developed. But the winter period should not interfere with that. It's really more about opening up the fence and allowing us to walk out there, which we're not asking to do. Well, we're really simply we're asking to, to provide the shelter. Sorry. Either in our letter or in the reso, and I don't know which one is better. We just want to say, if we do support, that we as the community board support. What's the name of the your organization, Esther? Neighborhood Cats. That we support org. neighborhood cats in their effort to um, shelter, you know, the cats that are living on the former. New market building site. I mean, that's all we want to set, you know, and, and yeah. using caps to yeah. shelter them. We aren't going to get into great detail about yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think you need to get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. yeah, I I don't think that's necessary either. I, Betty, I was basically agreeing with you. It it's fine not to be specific. It's just the gist is that we need support to help these cats survive the winter. Right, yeah. and so that we would just say that you know we support you in your efforts to to place shelters on that site. Yes, we don't have to say what the model no. number of the shelter is, but no, <laughs> well, I wouldn't even say them placing them. I would say that they are B and I support the efforts and having to have them there. Leave it to the EDC to say, you know what, they're the best ones to do it because yeah. we don't want to do it ourselves. Well, yeah. actually, Betty, since you're have an official, why don't you give us some language? Yeah, but I agree with what the what you're saying and the way you're saying it. A little oh, bit more vague. Betty? But yeah, she, she went back on mute, I think. But I think she'd be great if she gave us language. Yeah, that... Betty, can you just give us some language, please? As, as... Uh, 
Are you thinking or did we lose you? <laughs> oh, I don't know if we lost her or not. No, either. She faded out. Lucian, can you tell if we lost Betty or is she thinking? Um, I can't tell from where I'm sitting. Right. Okay. She's on mute from where I'm sitting. All right. So, so again, then why don't we just, I, first of all, in your opinion, uh, Lucian, letter or Rezo? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just a fan of doing a Rezo and then um, I'll send the Rezo and I'll, I'll write like a, a, an email kind of summarizing it and and, um, okay, so and basically, I'm just going to say again, what, what Esther's the name of Esther's group, which you have, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That we that and and I'm saying we support. Everybody will vote on it, but we support their efforts in sheltering these feral cats that are on the formerly known as you know New Market building site um, through the winter, which is approximately the end of. Um, I mean, I don't even know if we need to say, you know, like, yeah, actually, people. if you can spread, not even be specific about. Yeah, but what it's, winter months, because we don't know if it's going to be cold in April. Right, right. Um, so we're not, we probably won't be able to relocate them before that. Well, so, I, I would, I would, that, that's the 1 thing that they. They were hoping to get was uh, a timeline because mm -hmm. what, what I think their council would. Would. Be afraid of is if it says, well, right. you know, can they just stay a little bit longer? Can they stay a little right. bit longer? So it, I would, I would err on what's the 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 well, early okay, the end thing you're comfortable with. Okay, what? it's a question of how long the shelters will be there, not the cats, because no, we no, don't no, care no, if I'm, the shelters are gone when the weather's warmer. As right. long so as why don't we say the shelters yeah. to the end of April? That's and very good. In, huh? That's that sounds that sounds reasonable. Yeah, and then if for some reason we have some fluky weather and you need them to be there longer, we can appeal to their humanity to keep them there for another month. But why don't we just be say to the end of April? Yes, I, in fact, one of my volunteers just texted me and said the same thing, April 30th. Okay. Thank you, Paula. And do we need to say eight cats? Do we need to? Uh, no, I wouldn't be specific about the numbers either because we don't even know. We're assuming there are eight because that's all we ever see. Mm -hmm. but, okay. uh, originally, when we first went on site, someone told us there could be 10 to a dozen of them. Okay. So, you know, so I, I don't know. Do we need to say four to five shelters? Yes. Four to five shelters would be okay. Good. So yeah. then we'll say four to five shelters. And, and then that's, that's like as specific, specific as we're going to get. All right. That's, that's perfectly fine. Okay. So now does everyone understand what we're set proposing? Let me see mm -hmm. some faces. Yes. Okay. We're ready to vote. Yes. Okay. So we don't have to do a roll call. Shall we do it the way we've been doing it? Anybody opposed? Do we lose anybody? Number one, everybody's still here from the beginning of the meeting. We actually added Betty. So Betty is going to have to have an affirmative, I think. Right? So anybody opposed? Anybody abstend? Ex uh, any extensions as a supporter as a, a supporter of that group should i abstain because i'm specifically yep. a supporter of that group i don't think you have I money <laughs> thank <laughs> you to them <laughs> okay uh so i think it it's it's a go right so yeah betty voted for the first resolution so but i didn't hear anyone say abstain Recuse right. or oppose, right? Right. Is there is everyone? So we're all in favor. Okay. I'm good. Oh, oh, Diane saying Most something. Diane? Oh, is that? No, it says an I. You know. It's okay. Favor. All right. So we're all we're all in agreement, Esther and Kristen. Thank you all so, so much. much. Happy so we'll, holidays. We'll, <laughs> next Tuesday is our full board meeting. We'll bring the reso before. Wonderful. I don't know if you want to come and have your two minutes in the public session. <laughs> I'll try to make it. I'm in Virginia you, now, but I'll, Kristen I'll or one of you could just come announce the name uh, of your organization wonderful. and say that later on in the quality of life committee, you know, there'll be a reso, a reso coming up and you hope that the full board will support you. 
That's a, thank you. We'll do that. Thank you so thank much. You. And I'll just remind everyone we're going to have a GoFundMe soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that because we're going to yes, need your support. And thank, thank you. you for the good work you do on behalf of our little furry critters. <laughs> oh, we appreciate uh -huh. it. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys. Okay. Um, I am going to say that we have one more possible uh, topic, but I think we should forego it. Because it's not really critical. It's creating public access to bathrooms in government facilities. And this is something that we talked about last month. And Lucian had brought up the fact that in some public buildings, absolutely the public are allowed to come from the outside to use the bathrooms. I don't know if you all remember that. And so we were going to continue this discussion about public bathrooms. But it is now 827. And do you want to have that discussion? I got a question. I never did sign. Am I supposed to sign a form from the link? I never, I never yes. uh, filled the form. You yeah, mean to sign in for the meeting? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't yeah. sign in either. I think yeah, I'll send a link around, but it's, it's, it's on live.mcb1.nyc. And let me, if, if you all will just um, humor me, I, I'll, I'll show you exactly. It's the record of attendees. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. it. Because it looks like it does not sign me into the meeting, well, but I guess it's a sign. It, 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 it just records your attendance. Yeah, it records uh, your attendance and allows people to sign and sign up for the newsletter. Tells you to sign up for the meeting. This will not sign you in. Right, but, but you sign up. <laughs> it won't log you into the meeting, Correct. but it will sign you into the I'll, meeting. I'll, I'll, I'll change that to log you in. Right. Um, well, it will not fire up WebEx for you. But yeah, so you click on that. Well, that's and then, why people haven't been using it because it says it won't sign you in. So. Yeah, yeah, and then I, so I, 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 I'm trying to make this more streamlined, but um, yeah, I, I'll take I'll take recommendations from you if you want to give me some. I'm going to say well, won't redirect you to the I'm meeting. I'm going to say that I don't it's know if you all know yeah, that. Redirect the, like that. Yeah, redirect. It will not redirect you to the meeting. That's that, that's helpful. That change. So yeah, I, I, I'm going to make it. I had to go back around to the email and go in a second time just to get into the meeting. It seems. Right. Uh, uh, I'll know. send a link to uh, add your name to the attendance. Okay, I was just going to say so now. The last thing is that um, we are going to find out after January 15th whether the community boards will be allowed to continue meeting via. Um, Web Zoom or Zoom, whatever this or is, however right? we're meeting, you know, virtually. So um, if we're if they say we can't, then our meeting in um, January will have to be in person, and it will be on a Wednesday. Okay. And Pat, at the executive last night, didn't we vote to to ask for it to stay virtual? And at, and at the borough board meeting today, that was done. But you know, we don't see know. what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Seems inconceivable they wouldn't extend it given the I know. efforts made by the governor to, you know. I agree with you, Michael. Exactly. But somebody, Michael, today, one of the one of the um, chairs from another committee, uh, community board, brought up the fact that it may no longer be in the governor's powers because it's not. We're not in an emergency situation. So I don't know how that works, but they brought it up that it might not be within her powers to grant or deny. So I don't know. Yeah. Is it her call or is it the mayor's call? The mayor's call. Who's well, it? no, it's, it's a gov it's a state of New York. Yeah. It's a state law, but I, I think that this last extension wasn't an uh, an emergency order. It was actually um, like a little baby bill that they passed, just yeah. doing it quick. Right, um, and I think they, that they put forth another bill yeah. to extend it. Right, you yeah. leaned it. So they said because yeah. they, they passed. It was an emergency legislative session that was passed on there. So. I think that um, they will likely do the same thing, but we we need to I think really push for a, a permanent reform to so we're stopped getting punted around. Yes. Yeah. Also, one of the facts that a majority of the of uh, of the chairs from different um, uh, community boards, Manhattan community boards today brought up was that it has increased attendance, you know, multiple folds. Because yes. people can go, like, for instance, we can all go to all the meetings. All the meetings. meetings. Yeah. yeah. And, and the and public listen. can come to all the meetings now, no matter what the weather is. Easier access. Mm -hmm. 
And Betty oh. actually brought up in the executive committee that it allows people who might have mobility issues to attend all of the meetings without having to worry about getting out. So it's important that we try to keep it virtual. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. But like I said, if it doesn't pass, then our, our our meeting in January will be in person. All right. So we'll keep you updated on that. Anybody have any top? We'll we'll go back around. We'll circle back to the bathrooms. Yeah. Have that discussion later on. Anything oh. else anybody wants to bring up? Um, Mimi and I have been charged with coming up, and Francis, we're pulling you into this. We're roping you in. We have been charged with coming up with a date and time to do a um, holiday. I don't think it's going to be a holiday party now, but it's going to be a get together because we haven't had one in two years for the full board. So mm. some sort of party for the a board. real one or a virtual a, one? No, a real party. The James office had a, had a party, had a holiday party, and I think they had what, 40 cases of I, yes. Well, yeah, but they're not the trial, responsible. The, uh, uh, some trial attorneys or, or, or DA's office or something. I just saw that and Gail. Yeah, but you know what? The, the, um, um, uh, Gail just had a, I couldn't attend, but Gail just had a party. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't go. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I won't go in person. You had to have, and it's only going to be the 50 of us and not all of us going to come, but you all have to have your vaccine card and you all, you know, you have to have your, your boosters and, and we'll yeah. try to find yeah. some way of doing it. We might just wait till the weather turns. That's what and I was going to ask Pat and you guys. What about yeah, we wait till we it's out in the open? We can we do it outside. Yeah, yeah the, that would be the best. Feels, correct me if I'm wrong. I know Betty, you're 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 educated about this, and I'm totally ignorant. Uh, there's waves. Are those something that we can plan around? Is that ignorant? Is that stupid? A waves of like infection. Yeah, yeah well, I think it's after a holiday. You're going to want to wait. Like, look, right now it's exploding, and it's ten days after Thanksgiving. Or somebody do the yeah, math. It seems like the waves are like every three months or something awful. Like it, that. It's after a holiday. Really, they, this one was predictable because it's yeah. going indoors. Right. Yeah. Indoors. So, indoors. And delaying until the afterwards. The there will be new strains. There's no question yeah. there mm -hmm. will be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, outdoors yeah. still helps with that because right. we have a number of members who are not. Resistant, despite taking the inoculations. Yes, right. that's correct. Mm -hmm. so to make more people feel a little more comfortable going, it would make sense to just wait until it's warm it enough. Yeah. yeah, I think that's. So I think that's some place that has totally a patio reasonable. situation. Yeah, patio, so outdoor means, dining, roof, something where you could be could be outside, and we can all be outside. And we are gonna because there are people like Jimmy, for instance, who we love, and we're so happy that you're a part of our committee. But you have not met any of us in person. No, right? Ah. Yeah, he, he did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> no, but I, honestly, honestly, yeah. if I can throw in my two cents, I, I unfortunately, I think things are going to get worse in the next mm -hmm. couple of weeks. Probably yeah. worse will be in January. Right. I would just, um, the vaccine will definitely help for the, um, if you do turn positive, you're going to be less sick, but um, it's not, we have to go back to the way it was social distancing and wearing masks because uh, washing do not, hands. Do not, do not get a full sense of security. Right. You know, a condom is still just a condom. Okay. Right. You, you still have to take proper precautions. So this is different. I, I, this, yeah. these things are changing very, very fast. So, um, I seriously doubt that, um, we are probably going to be, um, zoom for a while. Right. Yeah, yeah. I wait well, till we, spring or something when it gets nice. Party, we will party. Or it could be a hybrid, maybe a virtual option. You know, if somebody can't, you know, set up technology, if some people right. don't feel comfortable or can't, or did we try that already? Yeah. Did we try that? I don't no, think we tried We, we sent that. out a doodle to see if people yeah. were interested. Well, didn't we don't try that? We will wait until the weather gets a little nicer so that we yeah. can. Yeah. Let's okay. just wait. Agree. Let's yeah. wait until but we I can all be outside. I miss you all. I, you know, I love this committee. I miss seeing everybody in person. I got to see Mariama and and Mimi because we went, like we said, to Worth Street. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, the rest of you, I would like mm -hmm. to see at some point. So <clears throat> maybe we'll arrange individual coffee dates. So we'll see. But okay. In the meantime, that I guess we're off. So everybody, thank you as always. We missed you for the beginning of the meeting, Betty. We were glad you're able to join us for the second half. Uh, Mitch wasn't with us tonight. There was some family emergency, so we all are hoping that it's something that's not too terrible. And um, I'll see you guys next week at the full board meeting.
Thank you. Right. Thank you. Right. Okay. Be good night, everyone. Thank you. Right. Bye. 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 Love you. <laughs> Take care. Bye, everybody. Thanks, yeah. Lucian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs>